Okay, yeah. Yeah, uh, before I start, a few introductory comments. Um, I typed myself out a note and then failed to bring it with me, so I will ramble around in my usual fashion. Um, you may not have noticed we had an election on May the 2nd. Uh, the voters weren't actually troubled because there were only seven people standing for seven seats. And so all six of us here, plus Colin, who's on holiday, were elected unopposed, as indeed was Mick as borough councillor. So it's um, um, a bit like sort of Groundhog Day or something. It's <laughs> carry on the same as before. Uh, but thank you to the councillors on the parish council for putting themselves forward and being willing to carry on. As I've said to one or two people, it would um, be, um, well, whoever knows. Good for you, though, all to be here, and thank you very much. I didn't know we had a choice. <laughs> I, tried not to give, I tried not to give you one. Um, now, the agenda has to be changed, uh, and incidentally, they've all just signed, and I did the uh, Declaration of Office, which is the first thing they have to do before they can even <coughs> sit in a council meeting. So we're, we're good to go. Now, the next thing is that the agenda has to be slightly changed. Um, the All Councillors to Sign Declaration of Office is number one on the agenda, which you've got on your seats probably. That's not really part of the agenda, but it's to make sure we didn't forget it. Um, the next thing is that number four, to elect a chairman to sign a Declaration of Office, has to go next mm -hmm. before we do anything else. Mm -hmm. And just to be clear to everyone, because this has not been the way it's been done in the past here, wrongly, going way back, going way back, going way back, um, there is a, 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 an absolutely explicit legal position required, and it's slightly odd. I mean, people would say, isn't that strange? Let me read to you the legal advice. This is national legal advice, it's not for us. And then you'll know that we're doing everything exactly right. The chairman of a council, which is me at the minute, remains in office until his successor is elected. So because I was chairman last year, I still am. Even when he himself has not been elected to the new council. Well, I have, but if I wasn't, I'd still be chairman at this moment. The chairman, if present, I am, must preside at the meeting at this point. If the chairman is absent and there's a vice chairman, he would do it. <coughs> we could change the way we do some of this in the standing orders, but we haven't done it uh, and we don't wish to. Now, the retiring chairman, me, retiring from last year's <coughs> chairmanship, the retiring chairman's duties include noting the number of members who are out, present or absent, receiving nominations, which we're going to do in a minute, and counting votes in the election of the new chairman. If the retiring chairman has been elected as a councillor, as I have, and is present, then he must preside over the election of the new chairman. No possibility of alternatives. Now, this is where it gets weird, because I remember when the chairman used to go out for the vote. Mm -hmm. The retiring chairman has an original vote, but isn't under a duty to cast it. If there's a tie, the retiring chairman has a casting vote, which he must use to break the deadlock. There is no legal prohibition against the retiring chairman using either his original or his casting vote to vote for himself. It is sometimes claimed that it's unethical for a chairman standing for re-election re to vote for himself. A council could decide that no candidate for chairman should vote for himself. However, such arrangements are unlawful. <laughs> and could not prevent a chairman or any other councillor from casting an original vote for himself, or prevent a chairman from using his casting vote for himself. <coughs> and then it explains that you can set up standing orders to say other things, but actually the law always takes precedence. So basically, that's what it is. So a councillor that wasn't elected could was still, still the chairman, but still have the casting vote for electing the next chairman. Absolutely <laughs> right. And it's in the <laughs> spot on. <laughs> and that's why I've read it out, because everyone would say that's ridiculous. <laughs> that is Local Government Act 1972. What it is, is to make sure that you don't lose yeah. yourselves and fall in a hole. Yeah. yeah. That's what it's about. Yeah. So that's the rules, um, and we go from there. So firstly, can I ask if people have anyone they want to nominate as chairman? Does anyone want to nominate anyone? Yes, I'd like to nominate Jeremy Smith. <laughs> Does anyone want to second that nomination? 
Does anyone want to Home make game. any other nomination? Nope. Okay, so we've only got one nominated, which is myself. Can I have a vote then on um, whether Jeremy Smith should be elected as chairman? I shall abstain out of courtesy. <laughs> and I don't have to cast a casting well, vote. Right, thank you for your... Um, uh, it's either the confidence you impose on me or that you've seen how much work is involved. Um, Definitely the first one. Right. Yeah, well, can't be the, oh no, it's got to be the second, doesn't it? Uh, okay, so I've now got to take a moment to fill it this <coughs> I'll put you down a second. I could have added, by the way, that if we hadn't actually elected me or somebody, any of the seven or the six of us at this point, then the council meeting would have been finished. We couldn't have carried on. Oh. So you now you should have said oh, yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If only we'd known. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Uh, right, so we're now, we've done number four. We'll go back to the beginnings of the agenda now. Number two, thank you for that. Declaration by members of any interest, pecuniary or other than pecuniary, the usual thing. Does anyone have, I didn't spot anything obvious. No. no. So we don't need to consider any applications for dispensation. A reminder to everybody in the audience and councillors that the meeting is being recorded. Um, apologies and reasons for absence. Council Sykes is on holiday. Are you happy with that? Again. Well, I'm not sure, <laughs> not really. And, um, <laughs> Do we accept the reason? <laughs> yes, the reason I accept. Yeah, good. And Joe Boss. Joe Boss, Boss safe community board. Good, thank you. Right, we've done four, so we can jump over it. Now we come to the election of a vice chairman. Would someone like to make any nominations for vice chairman? Leslie, who are you? Um, I'd like to nominate George. And does that someone second Alan? Uh, George, are you willing to stand as vice chairman? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you are? Okay. Yes. Um, does anyone have any other nominations? No? Uh, can I have a vote for George as vice chairman? Good. Okay. That's Thank all you. down as well. If only every committee was as simple as <laughs> Indeed. Um, it may be a good opportunity to say to people that I'm afraid this is the annual meeting of the Parish Council and there's an awful lot of things like this that we have to do tonight. So it's a fairly boring agenda of doing all sorts of standard stuff once a year. But on we go. Uh, at this point then, I will adjourn the meeting for the public session. We have got two planning applications to consider tonight. Three, land, three. Three, three, sorry. Three. three, yes, of course, there's two on one quality. Mm. Um, the land on the south side of Pastry Court Road, known as Willow Tree Barn, the land adjoining the beach is known as Hope Farm, and the land adjoining the beach is known as Trebian, Blackwall Road. Um, we normally take uh, the planning applications first if people want to raise any points. So taking them in order, does anyone want to say anything about land on the south side of Pastry Court Road, known as Willow Tree Barn? Well, it's quite interesting what's happening, isn't it? It's, it's really a question of whether AMOB um, beats Section Q, isn't it, really? Which is Section 2? Q. 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 Oh, Section Q. Q. Mm. <coughs> Which is? Well, that any farm building can be... Oh, right. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with yeah. you. Okay. I, I didn't know what it was called, but yes, I understand. Uh, yes, indeed. Does anyone else want to say something on in the public on the Willow Tree uh, Barn application? Does anyone here want to question, particularly Caro, who's raised the point? Well, I, well, Tim can't come tonight, so I said I'd come. Indeed. But I'm not, I'm not overly bothered because I think it has to look better than what's there. Yes. And I don't think he doesn't seem to be moving in all his friends and relations, which was what the original worry. Mm -hmm. But presumably if he does get one of those planning on a, on a and it's not an at cost barn, it's a pole barn, um, it does mean that a lot of people could do the same. Yeah. Which is section Q of course. It was section Q, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Yeah. I don't really know. 
Sure, I understand that. Yeah. Uh, and of course it brings up this point about AOMB, natural beauty, or beauty taken more widely, an agricultural building which came with um, dispensations and things can look pretty scrubby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you pay the money and you take some choice with it or not? Indeed. I don't know. Jane, did you have anything to add well, to that? Well, I totally agree with Caroline. Um, you know, I think there should just be restrictions on what goes there and what is people are allowed to develop. Mm. I just wonder sometimes whether these people just go and root themselves somewhere and, and expect planning permission to be granted without well, exactly their homework first. Mm -hmm. That is exactly what they've done because they've been like on that premises for quite a while now, haven't they? Mm -hmm. At least coming up for a year, even illegally tapping into the water. I mean, it's happened around the village in other situations years ago. Mm -hmm. um, very near me, and you got it, didn't you? They did, yes. Well, okay. Anyone <coughs> else want to comment on that particular application? Yeah. I have a couple of, couple of questions I'm just interested in. Well, first of all, when looking through the application, there's a very extensive description of what was going to happen afterwards in terms of, of, of the land, not just the building. And, and there was a, sort of a, a great detail of the different habitats that were going to be built mm. and the, mm. the logs for this and the bats for that and the hedgehogs. And the, uh, how is that checked up on? Who, who enforces that? Or who goes back afterwards? Because it all looks very wonderful <coughs> in the application. Is that um, just a ploy to... Well, I don't know. I'm just... I'm, I, I, I just wonder like who actually... When, when you get a, an application, and a large part of it is all about the environment and conservation and the benefit to the habitat of the wildlife. They, they, they don't have the resource to, to monitor it. There mm -hmm. isn't, right. there isn't mm -hmm. a resource mm -hmm. to right. monitor well, There wouldn't be any... Really, it's... To be rather crude about it, it's about like people sort of saying, you know, well, I've got arthritis, I've got out of the bungalow... Uh, a car man instead. That isn't a fact. I mean, they can have a lift to go upstairs and all the rest of it. But you're farming, and these people say they're going to do all these things, they never do, yeah. and they will then, <coughs> then go and sell the place. Mm. Mm. Are you okay. absolutely burnt about it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Impossible. And the other, the other point is that uh, given, uh, given the, um, I was going to say the previous as in what's been going on there beforehand and the illegal hooking up to the water supply, etc, etc. Is that, is that known to the um, planning authority when this comes up? They're fully aware of the fact that, my, I was under the impression that Ashton Borough Council were, were in a process of enforcement. Mm. I think it was enforcement in the absence of a planning application, but they were told mm. the planning application would come forward, mm. so they just put the enforcement on the back burner mm. pending mm. whether it arrived or not, mm. which it did. Mm. Mm. And, and, it, was, and, and of course, there's another enforcement later if they don't if they don't get it. But that's, yeah, a, diff yeah. but that's a different enforcement. Exactly. So, right. so the last enforcement <coughs> will have lapsed because they put in the application. Right. Yeah. The next enforcement comes if they don't get it yeah, and then yeah. don't move off. Yeah. Oh, okay. So given the fact that we've all been made to compulsory go on water meters. Is there a water meter installed? Well, the blue pipe is still sticking out of the side of the road, so okay. they're presumably waiting to be connected. Okay. <laughs> so where are they getting their water from? Um, I imagine, I think there's a connection, oh, goodness. I think the blue pipe probably indicates a meter due to go in, so they're probably getting it from the junction that the entrance to Palstrey Court. Is that the blue pipe that's... Mm. The blue pipe that waves yeah, around and if you go too close to the edge, it hits your car. It's when you smack. Yeah. But I think they're probably People waiting to have that cars. properly mm. properly it's done in. It's not a decoy. Well, they wouldn't have it done in. Mix it up properly until they got in. No. Yeah. 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 So they, they probably are on a, a non-metered supply at the moment, mm. I suspect. Probably. But that's to do with the water company, not to do with the power company. Indeed. It was moved in by a private company. It was what? Mo it was mold. mold. Mm. Yeah. M O L E D. Mold in by oh, a, yes. a private milling company right. who do sometimes work for South East Water. Right. But they weren't on, uh, because I stopped and asked them on occasion, they weren't. Yeah. They weren't on that occasion. No. Okay. That's interesting. Um, okay, well, we'll discuss it when we get the council meeting going mm -hmm. again. But I think we can probably move on from that one. Mm -hmm. and thank you for those comments. The next two we might take uh, perhaps together in the sense, or to the extent that they fit together, 627 and 628, which both concern the beaches down the street in the countryside. Um, 
One of them is converting <coughs> the barn into a three bed, mm. and the other one is um, extending a barn, making small changes to a barn into a one bed, and getting rid of some other rubbish buildings. Um, does anyone want to comment on them from the public? Is, it a, it, is there anybody overlooking it other than... I think it's pretty much out in the sticks. I was going to say, it's fairly out and, you know, not terribly obvious to anybody. Is this the one that came up yeah. last year? Yeah, yeah. 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 we've had it before. So, yeah. Yeah. So it's a, I'm sorry, I couldn't it's remember the detail of the last plan, but it's, <coughs> not it's, it's, it's a variation on the plan. We, we yeah. supported it. rejected last time, we supported it, it got rejected, as I recall, I didn't look it up today, and it went down on the grounds well. that it wasn't near enough to the village. That's right. And it also went down on appeal. It, it, hmm? it, it, they appealed, and, yeah. and the appeal... It, it, yeah, yeah, one of the objections from the, from, from the planning authority was that, that they don't want to encourage more private cars, and therefore they want to encourage people to use the public transport that system, it. because there isn't one there. <laughs> no. um, but the gentleman who made that um, decision or pronouncement has now left um, the planning authority. He's joined the list, yes. So maybe that wouldn't be... Uh, but we did support it last time. Yeah. Yes. We did indeed. It's such a scruffy area, and it's not overlooked by it. You know, <laughs> And I think you told us, if I remember rightly, that there had been a house there. Yes, you it, 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 it was old Mrs. Spedding's yeah. barn that burnt to the ground. Yeah. Well, that's alive. the beaches, wouldn't it? That's where the beaches has been built. Yes. But this is the next, next one. The next one. That's 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 the other one's Hope Farm, the one behind me. Okay, so no one wants to say anything more about that. So, does anyone in the public? Um, side wants to raise any other points for us tonight. Yes, Susan. Um, it's regarding the Swan Park. Yes. Um, I'm under the impression that Withers Green is intending this week to submit planning commissions for redevelopment of the park. Right. Um, I know that obviously it's been registered as an asset to the village um, and it won't be being registered for another two years because it's a five year process. But I just wanted to erase that issue just in case it does come up. Um, because obviously we're now starting a campaign to save the swan exactly. and um, so we have ways of proving that we are going forward with that Indeed. so that the, um, if planning does come up then we can object to it yeah. and hopefully it will be in our favour. Exactly, that's a good point Susan, thank you very much. Um, we have it on the agenda as you, you know, which is why you've raised it. Um, what I will be asking councillors to agree <coughs> is whether, let me go back slightly, um, with councillor's agreement, I wrote to um, Ashford Borough Council last year, can't remember when, maybe around Christmas time or something like that. Um, it went to the chief executive of the council at Nick, uh, uh, Nick's suggestion and to the uh, head of planning. Well, actually went to the head of planning, copied to the chief executive copy the chief executive because you've got environmental health mm. uh, who do the licensing as well as planning and you've got anyone who's concerned about you know rural business and things like that uh, so we covered the, the thing and at that time what I was saying was we're having meetings we are keen on reopening the pub uh, we're looking to do it as a community venture and be aware and of course it is an asset of community value so you support our sense of the value of the pub um, if councillors agree tonight, I will write again now on parish council uh, paper saying um, we're now moving ahead. The, um, we've had a very successful meeting with uh, you know, all the people there and uh, there's um, a whole lot of people involved. There is an inner working group. They have established themselves. They're moving ahead and everything's looking really good and everyone's excited about it. You know, it'll be... It's really saying to the council, the borough council, don't be confused by us, any statements that say, oh, it's a total dead loss, you know, uh, it'll never make any money. I was, I, I'm a brilliant publican and, and I couldn't make any money out of it, so it shows it's useless. Um, it, they need to say, well, actually, the, the community are champion at the bit and, and keen to get it open again. Yeah. So we'll put that on 
subject to councils agreeing, we'll put that on their desk again. And that kind of, and that also means that if um, your working group get hold of Ashford for any reason, you can say that council has been, you know, formally notified that we exist. Rather than trying to introduce yourself and they say, who are you? You know, the parish council is, is kind of vouching for you. Because of course we helped you to get set up. So I, I hope that establishes that much. Now as far as him putting the application in this week, if that happens, I'm actually, I think, from my own point of view, pleased about that. Um, on the one hand, obviously, I'd rather he wasn't trying to get houses built there. But on the other hand, my feeling is that he's not going to be selling it to anybody else unless he gets a complete knockback that he regards as final. Uh, the other uh, word that I heard was the fact that he was trying to do a deal with the guy at the ferry, mm -hmm. um, Mr Yates, who is a property developer, and Hart. he Hart. Hart, is it? Jeff Sorry. Hart. Mm -hmm. um, and that he was offering the Swan mm -hmm. as part of payment for the ferry. Mm -hmm. Impossible. <laughs> so uh, that's why he thinks that he's got a, a great chance of getting planning. Possible. Um, I mean, I think. Sorry. Yeah, he wants to buy the ferry. Yeah, I know he wants to buy the ferry, but what, what difference does he make to the planning application? Uh, well, he thinks ferry? that if he can prove to this guy that he can get planning for the swan, it's going to be more money, uh, uh, worth yeah. more money to him. He might, use, he he might use the swan with planning permission yeah. for houses yeah. as his down yeah. payment mm -hmm. on, the, yeah. on the ferry. Yeah. So yeah. That's, that's yeah. where he's going. He wants to buy the ferry, actually. Nothing to do with yeah. that. No, it's not. That's all true. The, the other thing that we, we could mention in the meeting, but as it's, in the, it's raised in the public session, which is it, it, which is the concern I have with, with him suggesting that, that the, his uh, discussions with the planning officers at Ashleborough Council already indicated they were in favour mm -hmm. yeah. of granting this. Yeah. And, and, um, and I've heard separately that there is no record of that conversation. No. Mm -hmm. That's not to say, I can't say the conversation didn't take place. Yeah. But it has not been recorded, and my understanding is it would have been recorded were it to have any value. <coughs> uh, and, and and also that if if a, a planning off I'm not saying they did, but if a planning officer did say that, they would be subject to the most severe censure. Mm. That's just mm. completely unacceptable. Potentially. Yeah. Um, mm. And so I'm I'm yeah. I'm inclined to to not believe him. Yeah. Yeah. But, but we don't know, we don't know that because we, we, we weren't in the room. The safe bet, yes. Yeah. We weren't in the room on that. No, no. Um, the other thing to bear in mind no, no. is that the mm. swan, without planning, from what we understand, and this may or may not weigh, you know, add up, we, we do know from the title document that it has a mortgage with HSBC. We don't know how much that mortgage is, but information is that it is not much short of what we would regard the value of the swan to be, if any. That means that while the swan with housing approved would be worth more, you are only making the extra. In other words, if for argument's sake, let's pick numbers out, uh, let's think of them. If the swan is worth 400,000 and the mortgage is worth 400,000, and, and with housing it's worth 600,000, then you only get 200,000 for it because you've got 400,000 mortgage to pay off. It's that simple. So it, it's money, it's helpful, but it's not, it's not like winning the lottery. And also the charge on it as well. There's a charge on it as well, mm. uh, which is a, a judgment debt, and that, uh, I am told by someone in a position to know, uh, is a fairly substantial sum. Um, put them together, you're, you've only got a little bit left. Okay, thank you for that, Susan. Anyone want to raise anything else? No? Okay, can I close the public session then? And we'll continue with the council meeting. Um, and we have a few things we have to go through first, I'm afraid, uh, before we get to the planning. So as always, we'll do the minutes first. Did anyone, this is only of the planning meeting. Oh, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. The, the minutes of the planning meeting that we had on the 18th of April uh, at the time of the annual parish meeting. After it. Does anyone have any points? Questions? It's only short, luckily. No? Mm -hmm. Can I sign them? Mm -hmm. are, they, are they all agreed? Mm -hmm. Yes.
Um, okay, thank you. Um, matters arising from the minutes, we've got a list here. First one is the update on correspondence with KCC Roger Goff on the change of KCC policy on free school transport. Uh, we have had some progress on that. Um, after last month, if you remember, um, we agreed that I was sending off a letter with a whole load of legal clauses mm. quoted to Roger. That went off. We agreed, uh, in fact, it was suggested <coughs> and agreed in the meeting that it would get copied to Damien Green at this mm. time. I sent it off to him with a covering letter, um, which the covering letter was really to explain the problem, because mm. otherwise just seeing it at that point of the legal thing, he wouldn't know whether it was coming <coughs> or going. So I did explain the issue. I don't think you want me to read this out, but the key points were to say it hadn't been resolved since he got the original one to Mike Hill in September when he said, you know, keep me in touch, but obviously mm. the hope was it would get sorted. That I had seen Roger and Mike Hill in December, and there'd been two lots of correspondence, all of which went to him, he got the lot. Um, told him where our letter came from, um, pointed out that we've you know, there'll be a rerun of the BBC News about publicity from parents, etc. Um, and I said that while the situation applies most graphically to Wittisham, located as it is on the Kent East Sussex border, nearly midway between a good Kent school and a failing East Sussex mm. school, I think this is what he would recognise mm. as a politician, the root problem may be of wider application in Ashford, Kent, or nationally. You know, we just happen to be in the eye of the storm. Um, I've um, said I think it cuts across parental choice in education and possibly his ministerial colleagues wouldn't wish to tolerate that, far less endorse it. Um, and <coughs> that uh, a policy that seems straightforward at the outset throws up unacceptable consequences when applied badly or overzealously. I've told him I'd be very happy to go and see him at one of his surgeries. And, you know, there we go. Now, the interesting thing is that he came back with a short letter and it depends how much we read into it. Thank you for your letter about the continuing problems about school transport provision for children in Wittisham. I will take, I, I, again he says, I don't know if he ever did, I will again take this up with KCC and see what solution can be found, which I think implies that he feels there's, a, there's an answer somewhere, whether it'll be what we call a solution mm. or not. It doesn't sound like, oh jolly good, carry on. Mm. Mm. It's a bit more than that. Mm. I think I think he sees that there's a <coughs> bit of an issue somewhere. So let's hope. Meanwhile, um, because we know that uh, we're heading towards the um, end of the term again, I wrote a letter. Uh, I spoke to um, um, British and School uh, beforehand, who said, "Yeah, that sounded a good like a good idea." Because Wittisham School won't tell us the parents whose children are going to Homewood, I wrote a note and, and sent it to the school and asked them to give it to all the parents mm. whose children are going, uh, explained the issue, which I hope that they know about, mm. and finished up by saying, um, or somewhere or other, basically saying, um, it's not open to the school to let me have your details so I can contact you direct, but you may contact me instead using the details below, letting me know that you want to keep in contact with the council and the other parents similarly affected and I can do the rest. And I gave them my contact details. I haven't heard from anybody. Mm. But that may come when they're told they don't qualify for the <coughs> transport, yeah. which I don't think has come yet. I think that's about June, July time. Mm. So they've been told. Okay, that's where we are on school transport, <coughs> that's all right. Get an acknowledgement from the PA from Roger Goffs. Oh, yes. It has been acknowledged, but that's all. Okay. That's all, yeah. Okay. <coughs> right, um, Great Britain Spring Clean, George. Yes. You just know the result, please, that's a minute here. <laughs> but we had it. <coughs> Thank you for those people that turned up. We... Excuse me. We had two phases really. We had the, the official within the village phase and uh, about 10 villagers turned up to, to help with that. We collected at least half a dozen sacks of uh, rubbish. What we did this time, rather than concentrate on the streets, which tend to be quite 
clean anyway because everybody does their own picking up. We concentrated, and I think Mary gave me the idea to be concentrated on the green areas, so the playing field and the and coronation field and the green and, and the alleyways down the side uh, of you and Lamb, that sort of those sort of places, and that proved very fruitful in terms of uh, of rubbish collected. And uh, also a couple of people prior to that had been out uh, off their own backs and mm. uh, done outside the, the city limits, if you like, mm. and collected yeah. even more rubbish. Um, so that was uh, it proved very successful, and Ashford were, were pleased with the uh, were pleased with the result. So we, we did our bit towards the Great British Sprinkling. Good. I, I was in Herne Hill near Fountain <coughs> yesterday. And there were two impressive signs as you went into the village at either end saying, please do not throw rubbish out of your car window. <laughs> there were two impressive what? Did saying, I please signs. do not throw rubbish. Signs. Out. Signs. You impressive, could do with those. really readable signs saying, please do not throw yes. rubbish. I mean, totally clean village, I thought. Whether they clean it up like we have, I don't know. Right. But it said, please do not throw rubbish out of your car window. Because that's what a lot of it is, certainly where I am. Yes, no, it is. It is. That's what they were collecting whether we can, cans and um, whether, whether, we could, whether we could consider that for our village. My only concern about that is it can become a target. Yeah. As people are driving yes. by, and see if we yes. can hit that sign that says "Don't yes. throw." Well, we should yeah. all be in one place. If we well, it would. <laughs> we, could, we could put a, a dummy CCTV camera on top of it. Yeah. yeah. We did talk about when David Green was the councillor talking about having the um, the entrance, the so to speak, the entrance gates to the village. Yeah, that's been that's, that's sort of you, you're right. It, it's in mind, but not very close to the front of it. Yes. Yeah, um, okay. it, it could go on the task list, which we'll get mm. to shortly. Mm -hmm. Additionally, I spoke to the church warden who happened to be there, and he said it had made a big difference to the village. Really? Uh, what was this? Yeah. Um, what? Hern Hill, Hill. It's near Farish. Mm. Yeah. Okay. It did make a difference. Mm. The church warden, who right. obviously has an interest in yes. villages' welfare, said it had made a big difference. Right. But well, the difference here, are. the issue here isn't inside the village, it's outside the village, so in, in that way it wouldn't work quite so well. Need to turn around and and we don't <laughs> tend to get, I was saying, either we don't get so much rubbish thrown within the village, well, we and inside, also yeah. people within the village mm. do pick up a lot mm. of rubbish themselves, so most of the streets are fairly clean most of the time, to be mm. honest. So, mm. well, except, mm. except at Leslie's end and my end. Exactly, yeah, but so we would have the notices the there. <laughs> yeah, but we yeah. would have the notices there. You could do, yeah. indeed. Don't throw rubbish in my garden. Yes. Well, <laughs> or else. <laughs> I've got a big dog. <laughs> no, but couldn't, couldn't it say something like, Wittisham would appreciate if you all... Yeah, but put, put the notices... It's a bit, bit wordy. Mm. No, we can't really have an essay. Take your rubbish home. <laughs> Possibly not. Anyway. We'll think about that another time. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Right. Um, the uh, housing needs survey meeting uh, was held yesterday, um, which Sue and Leslie and Paul and I attended, um, and we got feedback, as we'd said before. Um, we got feedback from an Ashford um, policy type, uh, housing policy, and um, Tessa O'Sullivan from ACRK on what they made of the survey. Um, you want to comment on that? Back um, it was, I thought it was very useful mm -hmm. that they took it through. Yeah, it uh, um, I think one of the things that came through is that you know, the, 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 there is a need, there is a demand. Mm. It was useful from the point of view that not only were we able to, to put some form of quantification on it, um, which isn't always e exact because not everyone fills it in, but at least it does give us an externally validated, independent view mm -hmm. and secondly because they did the one in 2012 you've got some sort of c comparison as such and, and I think the general feeling was that it gave us an indication that not doing something year on year is just not going to be a good idea and indeed not doing something last time which the council was in favour of ended up with us having 40 houses imposed on us well luckily the planning inspector um, turned that down, but that might not be the case in the future. We've seen examples throughout the, uh, the area where um, that hasn't been the case. And so what it does do is it, is it brings back the whole question of the, to the table, the council, I think, which is we either um, do an ostrich and hope we don't get touched again over the next 5, 10, 15 years, or we start to think about, well, you know, how do we um, engage this issue 
and find a way over the next few years of, of moving forward. Um, so no, no magic answers, but at least it was a good way of, of, if you like, giving some substance to the facts and the figures. That, uh, and they're quite, in context. they're quite happy to come and talk to us. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they felt it was... Uh, and I think it made them aware. being proactive. Yes. It made them aware. It <laughs> made them aware. They know that was about a really us. important point. They know that we, uh, we were saying, you know, we're conscious of the fact that we don't want to just uh, sit still and hope the world will go past us. Um, the uh, figures I read out at the uh, annual parish meeting, uh, what came out of the... Um, survey was a, a, a demand from the people who replied and to some degree of course people who want something more likely to reply assuming they actually looked at it <coughs> down with outlook uh, they wanted seven affordable homes three of which were for older households seven open market homes for older households and one private rented property for an older household so you know older households is 11 out of 15. Mm. And, uh, and that's and of course they free off, they free up other houses. Yeah, and also it was interesting that I think for, for a couple of things. First of all, we were able to remind them that we don't have a huge amount of land to infill. Because the, at one stage, that was the pronouncement, mm. saying you can, you can meet all of this in the future by infilling in your village. Well, we haven't, haven't got that. And secondly, the, the trend, if you like, and it's not surprising, it's because they, um, but in, in many other villages of their experience is that the demand for housing for older people is going up. Mm. It's not going down. And, and in this village, we haven't got that. Mm. Uh, and they said, you're not, you're not unusual in that respect. Yeah. And uh, it's good of you to recognise that yeah. you need to get that on your agenda in the future. Indeed. Okay. That's about where we got to, but it was a positive meeting and I think we were all glad that we were there. Interesting. Thank you, Paul. Um, the SWAN update, back to me, I've probably said most of it in the public session, um, but our councillors are reminded that I ought to be writing to Ashford again and updating them, particularly in view of the, um, uh, the story in the village that um, a planning application might now be quite imminent. I think it's one of those things, if you don't do it, and then you wish you had, whereas yeah. if you do it, yeah. you're not well, doing it. You can always send another one later. Yeah. Yeah. It won't do any harm to it right again. Indeed. Indeed. Mm. Okay. Nice. Just, just so that, that the people, what people, I mean, I think, I think people are aware of this, and, and I'm not going to go back through all of the, the um, input we had from the public meetings and people signing up to do that, but um, just to bring everyone to the level playing field, if you like, out of that, um, uh, John Newton uh, came as the sort of convener and has pulled together a group um, of uh, about half a dozen of us. Uh, so I'm, I'm on it, not as a parish councillor, but as an independent. Mm. Sue's on it as, as well. <coughs> There's a very good cross-section of people there. Um, we've got uh, the first meeting with a very full agenda of that. The first formal meeting is 10th? 12th of June. But, uh, thanks. 12th of June. Um, we're very much aware of, of, of what's going on. and uh, who, you know, who are the people on it? Right. Um, so Sue's not allowed to say anything, as it? <laughs> it's not a public session. So, I mean, uh, so Sue and myself, Neil, Neil McGlone, McGlone yeah. uh, yeah. Carol White, McClure. Neil. Neil McClure. Neil McClure. Okay. He is, uh, we, we, you weren't at the meeting, were you? I was at the meeting in the village hall. Yes, yes was. he was a chap who spoke about um, the Kino. It's very interesting, where which was actually is actually owned by the community and then leased to the, the yeah. operators. Yeah. His background is as he, he's an right. accountant and yeah. has that. Sort of, uh, Karen, who's got the lead on the on the sort of digital marketing and awareness building and so what have you. There's Sue, there's myself, um, there's Ray. John, there's Ray, who obviously brings the licensing yeah. Yeah. experience. John, as I mentioned earlier on, and Jennifer Maynard um, from the sort of Ministry of Secretary side of the Secretary. I think I've got that. That right. So it's a, it's a good cross section. Oh, well done. Totally good. Yeah. Um, uh, in the meantime, as John's away and I'm away for a bit of it, in the meantime, what, what we're doing is we're getting, we mentioned the Plunkett Foundation and, and John has been in touch with them. In fact, the day afterwards, and they were very responsive. And there are basically opportunities to download the templates that they can provide, which is all about getting the business plan, getting it organised, and looking at the funding and all those bits and pieces that you need to put in place to have a solid foundation for something like this. So, you know, I think we're, we're moving in the right direction um, and, and there's a good collection of talent there. Yes, so does generally need to include this sort of detail in his letter about what's going forward? 
I, I think that the, the spirit of what he said, I don't think we need a huge amount of detail in that. No. I would just say that... We, we need know, to we try and make sure that it doesn't just sound like, you know, smoke and mirrors. Yeah. So there is yeah. a really active going on. Yes. Uh, I did look up Neil McClure um, with Mr. Google, and he and his partner um, are running a kind of... I, I'm just trying to remember exactly how it was put. They're provide, they are sourcing expertise in the city. I'm not sure if it was a sort of mentoring expertise or corporate expertise, but one way or another, I just got the feeling that he will know a lot of people who know stuff. Mm. Yeah. In the, he knows a man who does. He knows a man who yeah. does, yes. Um, and uh, as uh, Paul has already said, he's a traffic accountant. Excellent. Yeah. I, I think we, we, need, we need the parish council through Jeremy, we need to make it very clear that this is something that's really important to the village. Mm-hmm. That's why it was registered as a community asset mm-hmm. um, and, and send those signals that we're not just sitting on our hands doing nothing, but we're very determined that this doesn't just get yeah. pushed through the long grass or houses built. Excellent. In, in, indeed. Um, uh, something else was just crossing my mind and of course it, it crossed away again. Um, Never mind. Oh yes, um, I also passed on to John. Um, I got a tip off. I, I, I'd had um, in the back of my mind before I was kind of handing it over to John that I never tracked down any source of knowledge about insolvency because it's not impossible that the company that owns the Swan could be made insolvent mm. because the. Um, the mortgage plus the judgment debt between them more than likely exceed the mm. value. Um, depends on how you value it, obviously. But, um, so were it to be driven insolvent, how would that work You know, in terms of banks having first shot and all the rest of it? And I tracked down that um, uh, one particular chart, uh, a certified accountant in the village <coughs> is in fact very familiar with insolvency and with working with insolvency people in the city. So I passed that name on to him as well, not for necessarily directly being tapped into, but available. Mm. No, knows about the issue and could be asked if necessary. So, you know, that side I think is covered as well. Is an independent valuation going forward, going ahead? It's on the agenda, I think. It's, it's, on, it's the, on the agenda, yes. For the June yeah. meeting, I know. I mean, to, to, as yeah. you might want to know, if you're, valuing a, if you're valuing a pub, you typically work to it on its turnover as a going concern, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Well, it isn't a going concern, yeah. so I don't know how the heck you... Uh, it's now out of my area as well. Uh, and and the, the value, of course, that's being driven by Withers Green is his opportunistic one, hoping he's going to be able to... No, but it was discussed that you in hand, yeah. We're seeking to do that. Absolutely. Uh, the way a pub, John, John is, is, the way pub is valued, according to um, the guy who's got the pub for sale, mm. which is um, Roger Thompson yes. mm. of um, A.W. Gordon Company, yeah. even if the pub was running, this is what he told me, and he's a member of the Association of Rural and Values of in premises, um, a fellow even. Um, even if the swan was actually operating, it's not valued by the profit it's making, it's valued by the profit that the valuer professionally judges it, as he put it, ought to make with a reasonably com- competent, competent public. Okay. Um, and you could even say, well, as the, you know, the gourmet pie and burger bar, that was inappropriate. Therefore, that isn't really the issue, even mm. if it was still open. It's what a, a sensible publican running mm. the business in a sensible way would be expected to make. Mm. And then they work it through with all sorts of profit levels and all the rest of it, and then multiply that to get the value. Mm. Okay, so even though it's closed, I always thought that was a problem too, but it isn't really because they would judge it as what it ought to do, not what it does do. Okay, moving on from the swan, the SIDS update. Nothing further. I'm waiting for Ashford. I've chased it, but um, Sue Smith is on the way at the moment. So. Bye, Susan. So, um, Ridiculous, isn't it? How long this is taking? Mm. <laughs> is this well, still who owns the land and do we have any land to push it? Crazy. It's, it, KCC weren't happy with the licence that Ashford granted oh, right. to mm. us to put the pole on their piece of land. 
So they've sent performers to what they would expect, which is extremely complicated, and Sue's then had to pass it on to someone else. But the other side of that, that's part of it, of course, Mick, uh, sorry, Mike, Mike Hill at the annual parish meeting was not happy at all and mm. said he would, and it wasn't the first time he said he would look into it again and see what's going on. I think probably the circumstances are that the officers will just say, got this, got that, got the other. And I mean, the fact is, it's very, Mick would probably agree, it's very hard for a councillor to interfere with officers who are saying, oh, no, 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 these are all the rules, this is the policy, this is the ticks. You know, it's a legal thing. And it's a legal thing. So yeah. it's very good, though. Mm-hmm. Right. Good. But, but the other villages that have got them, it's not as if we're the first village ever to do it. Yeah. You know, there's villages close to here that have got them. Tenters have got one up meantime. Yeah, so, you know, there must be some precedent, there must be a pro forma that they can fill in to to do it. I don't know. And also, just to raise the flag that this is about safety. Safety, yeah. And can they please just sort themselves out? It was all agreed once, and then it was unagreed when they looked at it afresh. So it's all about speed, and we'd like to see some. <laughs> okay, so appointment of members to existing working parties. Now we're on various working parties at the minute, they don't have to stay the same, but let's just uh, trundle through these. The first one, village caretaker, at the minute that is me and George. Mm-hmm. Um, incidentally, I think I'm right in saying that understanding orders, George and myself as, as ca- uh, chairman and vice chairman can sit on any committee but we don't usually rush to. Um, we're probably there anyway. Yeah. But the British caretaker is the two of us, plus obviously the clerk. And if that is um, good. satisfying mm-hmm. everybody, mm-hmm. then so I'm, everyone's happy with that? Yes, yeah. Yeah. good. Finance, uh, again, that is George and myself. I don't think in the past we've had anybody else. Um, it's uh, not as exciting as it sounds, believe me. It seems to work. <laughs> We just think it was. We didn't think it was exciting at all. <laughs> Is everybody Man happy with that? His oh, yeah. yes. okay. yeah. Planning doesn't really exist. Planning is the full council, yep. yeah. and mm-hmm. it only it only kind of this is an administrative <coughs> device. It comes into its own if a meeting is called, which isn't on the second Tuesday of the month, or is in August. But in fact. Legally, every meeting is called when it's called. They're not called actually on the second Tuesday, unless that happens to be when they're called. So, you know, you don't even need this device of saying it's a planning committee, it's different. But it does enable us not to go through the whole agenda, which is what we did after the annual meeting. So, planning is everybody if one is called. Everyone happy with that? Yes. Open spaces, this is uh, this is special. We're joined, aren't we? We yeah. are supposed to be okay. joined. Yes. Yes. Sounds we good. Don't, we don't join up very often. That's on that's <laughs> being recorded. <laughs> you, this could be a best seller. <laughs> Are you happy to carry on with that? Yes, yes. Well, we're happy to. <laughs> we're very, very happy to. Delirious. Up. Delirious. Is everyone else happy with that? Yes. No yeah. one else wants to join it. Highways. That's generally in the past been yeah. you happy of the working that. party and me going to the annual seminar. Yeah. And you sometimes so, as yeah. well. Happy okay, to continue. continue. Okay. I, I generally go to the seminar. Well, I do go to the seminar unless I happen to be away. And then Paul has come sometimes as well if he was able. Uh, that's the KCC seminar. Um, public rights of way, that's me, because I do the Wednesday walk, but I actually rely on my uh, learned friend on the left, <laughs> who's very keen. Um, I expect I'll be left with that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't go out when it rains anyway. Um, <laughs> and cemetery churchyard, I think, is Sue. Yes? Yeah. We haven't got Colin anywhere on this. Mm-hmm. No. Has he managed to evade the way? Was it that wasn't at the last... Let's make an executive decision. <laughs> Got to do everything for six months. <laughs> <laughs> public rights away. I think, I think public rights away as a supporter of yours would be a good yeah. one. <laughs> okay. He likes to walk. But in truth, public. I, I, I don't wish to kid you, public rights away is entirely done by Eva. I'm merely the the um, placeholder since we've got someone on the working party. Yeah, but we just want to get Colin's name on this oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe give him the cemetery churchyard as Sue's oh, assistant as well. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. make him walk yes. round and yeah. look yeah. at walls. Oh, <laughs> <churchyard, actually, laughs> and and get mummed at because the grass isn't cut. <laughs> well, given that, that, that I, I wouldn't want to sort of you know, take things for granted, but given that we might well want to elect Sue to the Tenton Social Social Hub, yeah, indeed. then, then well, Colin, yeah. Colin in the churchyard seemed a good okay. match up. Right, okay. Well, See, we have to ask if he's willing, but yes. subject He'd be to dying to do it. would be happy to do it. Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll Good. get down to the bare bones of it. Good. <laughs> okay, on we go then. Thank you for all of them. So we now have to elect two representatives to attend CALP meetings. Now, um, at the moment, it is me, uh, unless I'm away. George has been to one or two mm. uh, when I've been away. Uh, and also attended uh, an, an AGM of CALP, mm. which I know uh, he enjoyed very much. <laughs> um, uh, I, it's up to us that's what generally happens by the way across the mm -hmm. other council the chairman mm -hmm. normally go and another if people are happy with that yes. um, mm -hmm. that's fine thank you um, the county is going to have a bit of a change coming up because Alison who has been the chairman of the Ashford branch has stood down from Kings North Council where she was chairman mm -hmm. for reasons that were not disclosed I don't know what they were um, but um, I guess personal, but anyway, um, she's gone, and I don't know what's going to happen now at Calp. The vice chairman might become chairman, but on the other hand, he's just been elected to the borough council yeah. mm -hmm. as an independent, so uh, who knows what will happen. Mm -hmm. He might feel that that's going to take his time up too much uh, because he's going to be on Ashford's case rather than lot, I think, from what we've seen mm -hmm. before. Which, which, who was the vice chairman? Um, David, David Ledger, David Ledger. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. and he's in Ashford Independent. Yeah. Exactly, and he's yeah. been, you know, um, I mean, he's been up uh, banging on the minister's doors about planning. So oh, we're going to get back to him. Yeah. So I should think he'll be busy. Mm. Um, so I don't know what's going to happen, frankly. Um, Alison was very good. Before Alison, it was John Rivers of this parish. Yeah. Mm. Um, to elect a uh, representative for the parish police forum or similar, I guess that's probably going to be. Yeah, good. happy to do that. Are yeah. people happy with that? Mm -hmm. yeah. When yeah. when they had the meeting before, all three of us went. Mm -hmm. And did you come soon? No, the three. Yes, of us. there's no limit to the numbers who can go. No, mm -hmm. you're, very, you're very you're very happy to be named. Um, we need a representative for the village hall management committee, which until now has been George, who also happens to chair the village hall management committee, so that fits together very well. Mm -hmm. Does that suit you, George? Mm -hmm. Of course, yes. 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 Everyone else yes. happy? Yeah, very yes. We want to put someone on it just to keep an eye on it. No. No, we don't. No. no, not that much excitement. Okay, so that's all agreed. Uh, to elect a representative of Tenton and Social Hub. Now, Sue has always been doing that job. Um, apart from the fact that the job didn't exist because they never reminded her when there was a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't too arduous. No. I've given them your name again. I still haven't heard anything from anyone. Um, but no, can we do that again? Yes, I'm, I'm quite happy to do it, and as long as they tell me. Good. Well, I'm still hoping. <laughs> now, now that we're getting past our busy season, uh, we need to try and get the guy who was going to come to the annual parish mm. meeting back down here. Yes. To talk to us, because when I had a chat with him in the... Um, in the place, uh, and in fact, he he buttonholed me. He knew I mm. was going in to see the transport man, and he buttonholed me and said he wanted to talk and all this, all the ideas he's got. Yeah. So I'm sure it's very difficult. He doesn't even do a full time job there. But can we get him to do that within the context of a parish council meeting? Well, I'm assuming that. Yes. Oh, all right. Yeah. yeah. Good. Um, because he really does want to roll his services out to mm. villages and not just sit mm. in the tent. Mm. Uh, maybe and one of the things that, we, because we don't know when he can make it and no. we don't meet that often, maybe we could ask him, you could write to him and remind him about mm. Sue is our representative. And could could we have a copy of his, of his strategic plan, his business, whatever it's called, sure. in point. advance of him coming? Yeah. Because that gets on our radar. We wouldn't want yeah. to miss out on an opportunity. Mm. Yeah, he actually asked if he could come to a parish meeting parish council meetings mm. and I said well we've got the annual parish meeting yeah. that would be better because you're talking directly to mm. the public as well but then he, he turned out he was being taken off on holiday by um, so there you go um, one of the things we know that they will do is that Meals on Wheels has now mm. been rolled out as they like to say <laughs> and uh, uh, and you know that is available in which mm. now of course mm. we've got our weekly uh, sorry our monthly uh, third Monday lunch but people could do with more than mm -hmm. one yeah. meal mm -hmm. a month mm -hmm. if they're 
in that situation. Um, okay. Uh, where are we? One representative for Joint Parishes Transport Committee. Now, this is new. Um, it's a sort of offshoot of the Cal Cashford group. Um, is, it, is it transport? Yes, it is transport. Mm -hmm. Or is it traffic? Yeah. Who's tra transported it? Uh, it's a new one. It hasn't um, happened before. It's sort of just been getting going very recently. Um, but there's the opportunity to put somebody on it. Colin. I do. Volunteer. <laughs> 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 well, it's sort of quite interesting, I think. Okay. If you'd like to do that, that would be good. Okay. I think um, it'll probably get into. I mean, it'll be Ashford wide, of course. Um, oh, it's not just the local parishes. It's the parishes within Ashford. Okay. But it'll depend who goes. There will be right. some. What you will find is it becomes a bit sort of Ashford centric, Ashford ring, not Ashford town because they're barely parished at the minute. Mm. Just about. But around there, you know, the Kings North and the Canardingtons and that, mm. and not Canardington, uh, Kings North and um, Great mm. Chart and um, Shadowhurst. Yeah. Mm. Sorry? Kennington. Kennington, yeah. Mm. The ones that have really got traffic problems will be driving it mostly, and there will be Junction 10. But So it's more, oh, I see. I thought it was more about trying to get a. Well, it could a be. link of uh, uh, well, it could be because link. as oh, as, as, as Tenterden gets yeah, uh, further it. developed, right, mm -hmm. and people will be using this area more as a cut through. Mm -hmm. That's never going to happen. And with the the big development up at um, Chilmington Green, mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. people look at it. There will be an impact on our area, and I think that the the you know the traffic piece on one side on hand is is important. But the other hand mm -hmm. is. The whole thing about you know public transport, community transport, mm. you know, how do you lessen the impact yeah. on rural areas? So I, yeah. you know, it's important. Yeah. I'm trying to avoid actually. saying you can steer this in whatever direction you want. No, please, please. <laughs> I think it was David Ledger, particularly with one or two others. But to be honest, this is an area that I have not taken much interest in because it doesn't directly affect us. Mm. But this is the this is only they've only just started. What they had was a sort of rather informal thing that was looking at Junction 10A. I think this is where it came from. Right. Um, because some parishes were going to be badly, they thought badly affected by 10A and not necessarily for the better. Um, and. The, I think it was at the last meeting, they, they, maybe the one before that, that they said, well, what about we're putting this in place mm. longer term to, to get more involved in traffic? And as I, said, I think, to be honest, traffic is a bigger, or tra or transport is a, traffic really, is a bigger problem for some parishes than yeah. others. But it's one of these things in some ways where you can get good contacts uh, and you can see things coming down the road before they, they develop, you know. Too many, too many times. Yeah. It was cat. This is cat. Yeah. Yeah. My understanding is this is cat. This is not yeah. anything to do with the joint transportation board, no, 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 no. which is Kent <laughs> and Ashford. Mm. Mick is on it. Right. Uh, and one parish chairman in Ashford, which is Keith Ashby from Kenardington. He is on it for all the parishes okay. with a watching brief and he lets us know the agendas and the minutes and they're usually big schemes and it's endless. I, I take my hat off to him for the stuff he has to read. Uh, they're big meetings. Mm. Okay, let's move on for that then. So let's look at that. I think we're all happy with that. In fact, we're delighted. <laughs> So, the planning application first then is Palstreet Court Road, um, change of use and works of conversion, this redundant barn to a residential dwelling, etc. etc. <coughs> now, you may have seen that there was one objection comment put online by S.W. King of Cullen's Cottage. Um, it's, uh, it's quite an interesting two pages. Everyone else has sat on their hands. Uh, apart from in this meeting today, there's nothing else online today. Um, this is really uh, saying um, there are a lot of policy objections to what they want to do, and and rather like uh, Caroline said earlier, if this is approved, then it could all be approved. You know, mm. there are lots and lots of barns, they could all be houses. Of course, the policy is the policy, it's set by government, and some of it's by Hashford. 
plus the fact is that houses are needed. Mm. So you've always got this. Could I possibly read that? Would you mind? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Is, that, is that from your mm. neighbour? Yeah. 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 For people we've seen here before, talking right. about mm. the house. Yeah. Right. Okay. He, he lives in London, or he lives or he, yes. Yes. he has houses he and in his wife, every I town. Every town, town house. House. <laughs> you know, he's got. He I, collect, know, I know exactly. He collects houses. Right. All right. Okay. Um, so, while Alan is busy reading, who wants to start us off on this? I'll start us off. I mean, I know when we were having the conversations about it, we were talking about what they've been doing leading up to the fact, the point mm. we're at now, and the fact that the the uh, application may be a delay on the enforcement, and it, it could all be sort of politics, really. Um, but I know in some we can't take that into account when we're looking at, at the application. Um, I think for the danger of being sort of a, the same record over and over again, it's still the AONB, mm. as far as I'm concerned, that applies. And as someone said, you know, you could if you turn one barn into a house, you can turn them all into a house. I think that's the danger. Um, it's totally isolated down there, and I think to put a house down there um, would, would actually do... I mean, you've got to look at AONB as a positive. What, what benefit would it be to the village? It wouldn't be any benefit to the village at all. It might not be detrimental, but it wouldn't be a benefit. And I think we that's one extra house. Yeah. So well, that's the, that is the benefit. That's not the benefit from the point of yeah. view of the countryside. No. It's the benefit from the point of view of people living in houses. But uh, so I would, I wouldn't support it personally. No, okay. Alan? A couple of observations. One is that Mrs. Edmondson, who lives at Bottom Lodge, has been seriously troubled by the generator through the winter and the, the noise of the generator in the morning. Um, and there's been quite an, an active sort of um, group around Palstrey. Um, sort of Caroline and Jane are part of that, but there are quite a few other contributors, and I possibly I'd be surprised that none of them are here mm. today. Um, those are just sort of tangential observations. Um, I, I'm, I'm probably not going to say any more, but um, that's, uh, I'm going to leave it to others. Um, the Potmans Heath Lodge that stays here, is it? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, I'm sort of, yeah, I can see how that's a distance from you, but not a huge distance, I suppose. It's a, well, just across the field. Yeah. You know, it is di directly across the field. And, and then, the generator actually drives her wild, because you know, in the winter, it's not as bad now, but in the winter, you know, sure. it was mm. really quite yeah, loud. Mm. And, um, and because they're not supposed to be living there anyway, and they're not the council. <coughs> and um, as for um, London, that's sort of across another field in the other direction, yeah. isn't it, from the back yeah. there, I suppose. It's probably down a dip, though, so it yeah. doesn't... I mean, the, 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 the sound perhaps yeah. comes across the flat. I don't know. But OK, Sue? So. Um, can I just... Yes, can I please? I think it's surprising that there aren't more objections on the online than in that yes, case. Yes. I, I haven't read that yet, but uh, um, uh, it struck me that, that if I, I was trying to be as, in, in, as objective as I possibly could be and put aside what I thought about the, you know, quote, illegal, and end quote, development and what was going on there and was there a business running there and was it running through the night or nothing. So when I looked through their planning application, to me it seemed... Um, entirely reasonable. I couldn't see any reason why the application itself was going to be turned down. And I was also mindful that we'd just approved one in down Kingsgate. Mm. And, you know, if you take the people yeah. apart, the principle of that, that's knocking down a barn and building another one there. And, and you know, we, we kind of have to be consistent on this. So I I um, I think providing it's... it's, it's um, struggle with the sort of whatever the architectural accepted type is in the village because there's, there's so many of all, all sorts of different shapes and houses and old and modern um, but if there were barns that, that were going to come up for conversion you know by and large if they're done reasonably well and this is not a classic old sort of you know barn conversion that you see in the high end mm. property sales thing is it? Is it it's a sort of one that's sort of almost sneaking under the radar there uh, I 
I couldn't, I haven't read that and I'd like to, but I couldn't see any particular reason that I could say we, that should not be allowed from a planning point of view. Just say, I, mean, so I agree with you about being consistent, but yeah. that's assuming you think you made the right decision on Kingsgate in the first place. I think <laughs> I did, yes. I mean, no, so, I, I, so I do. I, I, I think that, um, uh, you know, the, I looked at the height yes, yes. And, uh, and the scope and the scale. And bear in mind, I think this was the second, it was already reduced, wasn't it? There was an original application mm, yeah, yeah. and that had been, been reduced. I, I, I read through the, the uh, architect's description, environmental and biodiversity uh, thing, and, and that's why I asked the question about whether or not that's completely mm. um, I, I high in the sky. <laughs> I think what's perhaps only different is that Kingsgate, the buildings there have been there really long as it, I can remember, not right. anybody in the village can remember. I mean, I certainly remember the at-cost barn going up at Palstrae within the last few years. Right. And it was, I remember it was, it was that field was called the tar tank, as you, perhaps you did or didn't know that. Yeah. And it, it was the tar tank because they cut the, the chestnut poles in the wood and there were a couple did, of big tanks by the yeah. roadside where they dipped them and then they were used as hop poles. Did they have to have permission to put uh, the acorn barn up? No, you see, they got that up just before planning... Um, you could put an agricultural building up. barn up without mm. planning permission up to about 1985 okay. or 6, um, I, as I remember. So you right. could just put it up mm. and, and it was only planning came in. So I mean, that, that went up just before the plan. Mick will well, know better than I. But I mean, the planning, so they got up just before they had to put planning permission in to get that. So that's a recent addition to the landscape, which to a, you know rather than okay, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, very, yeah. and, and, and I, I think that uh, that's quite significant because I think that's quite significant, and, mm -hmm. I, and that, that that's if I've got a reservation, that's my reservation that it, it's a yes, it's a recent. It's a no, recent architectural, point. architectural merit. No. Uh, yes, indeed. Yeah. I mean, yes. <clears throat> so that's it. it I'm, Absolutely. I tend to agree with Paul in, in the sense of looking at the actual plan for the building. Look perfectly acceptable if you know one agrees that we do need to gradually increase our housing stock. We can't put much up in the village. Um, and therefore Again, if there wasn't the other consideration about the illegality, um, I don't think that I would necessarily object to it. Except that, um, as was pointed out in there, um, it's within an area, it's been proposed within a much larger area than you would normally require for a bungalow type mm. dwelling sure. and the concern is what are they going to do with that I know they say they're going to do all this conservation mm. stuff I'm a little sceptical about well, that I think, I think we have to take that with a pinch of salt as Mick's already said the, 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 no, the monitoring do. arrangements that are non-existent mm. and, and the, I think the chances mm. of it actually occurring I think hedgehogs are, are quite capable of making their own homes so, quite easily around yeah. here but um, that would concern me more than the actual sure. building plan I, 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 having read this and, and, and very colourful language, whoever's written this, you know, which is, uh, which is quite he's, a, he's a London surveyor. Well, yes, and, and, and clearly someone who rises to, to a sort of um, uh, excitable temperature quite quickly. Indeed. Um, because some of the stuff here is, is, is worthy of not nine o'clock news, frankly. Indeed. Um, can be excitable. The point here, he's saying, if he's correct that the NPPF doesn't support the application, well, then it's a done, it won't, it'll get thrown out by planning, I would have thought. Um, well, there's always a balance. There's some, there'll be exactly. Exactly. There's something different. Uh, the comment here that it's the whole. Now, this is an interesting one. It's the comment here. I'm reading, and I've only read this quickly. Is that all of the land is in the red? Mm. So the planning commission will read. So he's this this author here. This writer is saying. So once it's granted, it's can we all be chopped up? We can have a huge housing estate there. That's what he's saying. Well, I'm sceptical of that. Well, I'm sceptical, but is there any way we can, whatever our decision is, we can actually register the fact Certainly. that we don't want, mm. you know. The other thing I'm thinking of is that um, potentially uh, this, this, this person could actually build a much bigger property mm. there as stables. Uh, as an Because you, you, you can't argue that it's an agricultural property and then say, but you can't put up agricultural buildings there. 
So it might well be that he ends up putting a business there, which would be a big, whatever it was, stables or, or you could put it all sorts of business, under an agricultural thing. So I think we have to be a little bit mindful sometimes of what's the alternative, right? In other words, if, if this gets turned, <coughs> is he just going to leave it or carry on with people coming and going or carry about, you know, to what extent can we actually send a signal that we what we don't want as well as... Well, if we, if we didn't get the permission, then the enforcement team would again mm. yes. engage. Mm. Mm. Hopefully. I think, well, the track record isn't, would, isn't overwhelming. Except that this committee, if the enforcement... And mm. it, it's all if and if and if. If yes. he didn't get it, and if the enforcement team didn't act, this committee would get very agitated indeed. Right. Would it not? Yes. Mm. Mm. And, but and, probably and, they haven't and, acted and, and, and so we, far. We, at that point, we would be demanding satisfaction from the enforcement team. Yeah. I think they've been putting it off to see where the planning is. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, having, having, I mean, this is, sadly, this is a little bit of a red herring, this, it, it, it given is. the tone of it. But I, 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 I still think that if... It's a difficult one. I think it, 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 Trump, if, we, if we, I remember a conversation we had, a, a, you know, a meeting here several years ago, where... I can't remember who it was, it might have been you, Jeremy, who reminded us that we really had to focus on the, the planning elements yes. of it rather than sort of our own personal the, the feelings. Truth in, there's truth in that, although you know. at the same time, that, that, that is, you know, they, we're always told by the planners that there are only certain things that can be considered yes. by mm. them and therefore we should consider those things. Now, that is a perfectly sensible way of looking at it, but at the same time, they actually look to us also for a local view. Mm. Yeah, no, I agree. And therefore, if we were simply trying to be doing their job as amateur planners, we wouldn't be adding no, anything no, to no, it. Yes. So we have to give a local view, recognising that if our local view doesn't add anything to the planning policy considerations, it's hard for them to take much notice of it, so we'd be wasting our breath. So can, we, those two can, we, can we say, can we... Can we um, document our concerns that include the fact that this is already a site that's causing us anxiety. Well, well we surely have to make our decision first we have, before, yeah. before yes. we qualify. Let me, let okay. me give my views. You're qualifying it before we've made our decision. Yeah. Yeah. Let me give my views, um, yeah. which are, there are bits on both sides. Um, I know George's point about the fact that the House doesn't bring anything to the AONB, and were they just planting a house in the middle of the field, that would be true. Of course, the fact is there is a building there already, and so in terms of increment, um, it is either a bit better than the one that was there before, or a bit worse, or just the same. Mm -hmm. Arguably, it's a bit better, unless one takes the view that agricultural buildings are ignored by the eye, and houses are an affront to the eye, or something of that sort. Um, the fact is that it, there are these bands there, and it's a bit like Kingsgate. Mm. Of course, it's a big site. Yeah, it is and, a big site. And, and once there's one building on, of course, yeah. then it's well, that's, very that's much easier. That's a point for us to make uh, yeah. to, to, in our narrative. Yeah. The, the comparison with Kingsgate, I think, is a not unreasonable one. Um, but I take the point about how long things have been there and all the rest of it. It is also true that this is it's not immediately visible from the road. I mean, it's not sort of right in your face, but this is visible from the road. King's Gate is about a mile down a private road, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Or, well, with a pro going mm -hmm. past it. You can walk past it, but you can't drive past it. Um, we, do, uh, we do want the houses. <coughs> um, I have said before, um, both here and elsewhere, um, I think I've said it here, I've certainly said it elsewhere to people, uh, the, the point that's been striking me lately, hearing the Ashford line all the time, and we keep hearing it from the like, kind of houses in the countryside, oh no, you know, they've got to be in the, in the built up area and all the rest of it. About half the houses in Wittersham, by my reckoning, are in the countryside. Um, you know, it's probably got about 250 to 300 in the built up area, and um, just over 500 uh, in total. So. Um, a lot of them are in the countryside, they've been there a long time, some of them are listed. Um, they don't offend the AONB, they're part of it. Now, obviously we have the issue about when we build a new house, mm -hmm. it doesn't look like, you can't build an old house, you can only, an old house can only happen. But there are houses, mm -hmm. you know, just along from uh, the one we're looking at is a whole load of listed buildings. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, you get then into the situation of you know the context of the listed buildings as well, but it's not that close. I do think there's this important issue that Mr. King raises, or maybe Mrs. King, I'm not sure which, as to the fact that there's a red line around a whole big area with one little bungalow. Does that then mean, oh, well, it's been approved for housing, so we can put another 15 in there? Well, you'd have to get permission for the 15, but you know, does it sort of sell the past? I'm skeptical of or that. Or put a business on On the other hand, if he wants to actually be able to change the agricultural nature of that field to being a bat bell free and a wildflower meadow, not a wildflower meadow, but a this and a that and the other, in some of those cases, I think he needs planning permission as well. So, of course, it's chucked it all in. But I do agree that we should be very clear that mm. it should not be getting an implied consent for housing just because it's got a big, a big area. And, and if you think about it, a house that's been approved with a big garden does not carry an implied consent to pop one in the back garden later. No. You can sometimes do it, but there's, there's, a, there's not a sort of implied consent for it. So I did have a we, call from um, one of the Palstrae residents yeah. earlier on this evening. Um, difficult to re, re, retell what he felt, but his view, and I think the view of his immediate neighbours are that the chances of the planning committee at Ashford letting it through are absolutely minute. I don't think they're high. And, and he, was, he, he was confident that, 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 that this committee wouldn't approve it, and he was confident that ABC wouldn't approve it. But so it then goes to appeal, and yeah, the inspector and could toss it going. Indeed. <laughs> but I'm just telling you what. No, oh, indeed. The, 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 those who aren't here, that no, was also. I, I, I think that that. And when we get to the beaches, I think they're both on an uphill struggle. Mm. Um, but whether I agree with it being on as much of an uphill struggle as it is, I, I'm, mm. I'm probably more balanced than that. So, just um, as a matter of interest, and not that it necessarily it, it's always an indication, but does the person who put the planning application in plan to live there, or is it just really well, developed? Well, you can never tell. Well, I, I know that, but what do we know about? Yeah. Do they live somewhere yes. else? Does it sound like? Yeah. Well, I think it probably yes. be your view. They do live there. I mean, I do know some of the. I mean, just because it's been reported to yeah. me by the Palstrae Group. Yeah. I do know some of the social history, which may or indeed may not be relevant for this committee. Mm. Uh, well, it yeah, probably isn't. No, but it, it probably might, isn't. I mean, should it? I mean, it's just, I think. It might inform expectations, but our understanding is that he, lives, he or she or they live there now. They do, and there's quite a lot of coming and going, and there has been some aggression. Mm. And. Um, On their part? Mm. Mm. Well, I've driven past there in the late in the evening, and there's clearly something going on there. Yes, yeah, so they, they put a drive. This is not, this is this is not a day tripper. No. So we know, <laughs> because, you know, and there are, I think, there are fierce dogs and things. Yes, and um, and, and I, I, I think, the, goodness, I remember. I mean, we've had this conversation before, but I remember it coming up for sale for fifty-five thousand pounds, and it eventually sold for. Well over two hundred thousand pounds because presumably the agent identified it as a possible spot for planning. It's a lot of money for a field. Yes, it yes, is. Yes, and um, I, I think the money came from a settlement of some legal settlement um, that the new wife um, had, 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 had benefited from. Okay. But, and, I mean, I'm sorry, it's all a bit tangential. Right. So let's just um, see who hmm. is in favour, who is not in favour. George, you said you're against. Alan? Not against. 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 I think I'm against. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll go with. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I was going to abstain. I'm not in fact now. I'm against. I think there's too much um, unknown. unknown here and, mm. and, and what have you. I, I think I can't see any reason, any compelling reason to support it. Okay, so I think then uh, if we're going to object, as we will, uh, I will go with the majority. Um, if we're going to object, then I think <coughs> we need to put in some narrative. And I think, um, so you tell me if you think other things should be said. Um, I think we should be said that we are aware of the history on the site uh, and the deferred enforcement against the mm -hmm. um, uh, residents that is taken mm -hmm. up. That we note the objection by Mr. King, uh, or Mrs. King, whichever, S. Something King. 
um, and the points they make about the policy, um, that we are um, conscious of the uh, size of the field that is being drawn into the house and would be very anxious if, uh, I mean, if we've objected to it, we kind of are objecting. We're not saying we're worried about what happens if it was approved, but, no. you know, that it's a point that we've no, pointed out. It's a very important out. point. Yeah, yes. um, well, it's one very important reason we object. <coughs> Um, and I think, uh, and we recognise that um, it's always a delicate balance between um, converting agricultural buildings to housing um, in the countryside. And, and on this occasion, we don't think that the, um, the case is made. Something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's, yeah. It's difficult because... Mm. As we know, we'll get another one. We might even in two minutes' time get another one and we go the other way. But the history is not so bad there. Mm. And then, is the history a fair planning consideration? It's more, the, fu more the future you need to be looking at than the history. Yeah. I think, the f yes. Well, the future, the future. two minutes. Oh, yeah. right. yeah. Okay, yeah. you're right. I, yes. I know what you mean, George. <laughs> okay, so if that's satisfying everyone, mm -hmm. okay, let's move on then to um, the beaches. Um, Hope Farm and uh, Trebian, they're similar in most respects. Uh, it did get turned down before, and Alan reported it went to appeal. Um, I've forgotten that. That was the Trebian. Trebian, yes. 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 yes, it was a three bedroom. No. Oh, I see. Yes. So yes. this is a bit different. Yes. And that was mm. to do with the transport. And yeah. the transport. Well, yes, it, but we supported it. Yeah. And, yeah. and that, to be honest, again, it, it has no. Um, intellectual merit as an argument when you've got half the village living out in the no. sticks mm. to start with. Shall I go first on this one? I'm going to say I'm going to support both of them. I looked at it very carefully. Uh, I thought that I went down there, had a look. I didn't manage to go into Hope Farm and <coughs> see the back of that, but I had another look at Tre Tre um, Trebian. It's a, it's a complete mess there. It's shambles getting worse. Mm. And uh, it will benefit hugely from um, this sort of improvement. The thing that stood out for me on the uh, Hope Farm one was I didn't have a look at that because I couldn't sort of get in there at the time, but it does seem to me a substantial change in the positive planting of all those trees in that orchard and the landscaping that's going on um, uh, from what would seem from the plan to be a fairly sort of um, bitty collection of buildings. So I just say I support both of them. Could I just uh, say, so why do you... Why do you believe they would put an orchard in when we didn't believe the others were going to put a wildlife oh, I've moved on from that I'm looking, I'm looking, for, I'm looking forward now well I guess I guess, I guess uh, I'm looking at the property around it the people that own the beaches and what they've done there which I could see that was something that that was visible to the to, to the rest of the world and the evidence that I can see on that so you're right it's a, but it's a different I think it's a different consideration the, the style of building as well is more attractive um, I think. Um, and uh, uh, other observations on the feed from yeah. the neighbours? No. Oh. Nothing. They haven't got no, any no, 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 yeah. no objections. They've, 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 they've got Jonathan and Julian and they've got yeah. um yeah, is it or Mrs. Spedding's house, old house. That yeah. wasn't no. Cook's bumpers wasn't consulted. Oh is the this beach was built where a house was. It was John Hampshire's house. Yeah, it's it's Cook's, down, it? Cook's farmhouse that wasn't. Yeah. That's the one down for Yes, and that wasn't the place. Um, the Poof Downs were consulted and Ham Green farmhouse. Mm. Or Cream. But there was nothing, but nothing was on the beach. Uh, not not the beaches and not Cook's. Well, the beaches are the applicants. Oh, mm. mm. It's they who own it. Yes. Yeah. In, in the big house. Yeah. Yes, mm. Nigel. Mm. Yeah. They're yeah, the ones who are putting it out. Mm. Yes, yes, they did. Leslie, I have no objection. No objection. You have to do it. Mm. So, no, I've got no objections at all. Um, no, I, I'm supporting. You're supporting sex uh, and George. <laughs> well, yes, <laughs> for the same reason as, as before. I think the other thing that concerns me as well is, well, I know we shouldn't link applications together, but the reality is, you're on. You're looking at two applications on the same piece of land in effect. Um, you're going to start off what we've got now is one house the beaches and finish up with a small hamlet 
of three houses so what's the you know the next step could be another couple of houses and you've got an almost a, a, there are no a village there on are its no own outside buildings are there there are no 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 but it, but the Yet. point i was making with paul and i wasn't trying to be facetious paul was that you know we 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 didn't like certain things on the previous application because we couldn't see they were going to happen and this that, and the other and yet some of these on here are exactly the same as they quoted on the previous one but we believe that might happen on the, on this one so uh, for me it's it's again that you know what was the value to the village of doing that it, it, it's far enough away from the village not to be any value at all to be honest uh, I agree it's not going to interfere with the village other than probably adding to the uh, the road usage uh, which will be detrimental so I would I wouldn't support it okay either my, my feeling is I, I'm supportive of it um, I, I, I think what George says about going from one house to three is true and there'll be more people going up and down the street but then yeah, they'll, they'll be walking across the footpath oh, obviously yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. the planning application they, they might use the, the park they might right, use they the shop the whole back end didn't they yes, yes they obviously took note of uh, what uh, Mr whatever his name was Bax said last time uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm supportive of it. So, in fact, we are supportive as a council. I'm sorry, can I? It's all right. Um, <laughs> I, I think that, um, yes, George made the point uh, of the AOMB, and it is true. Uh, we're in the AOMB. Um, we've got a large house pretty prominent there of the beaches mm. already. I don't think it makes much difference to put you can see the beaches from some distance mm. putting another two next to it which are rather smaller don't actually make much difference to the uh, um, visual impression I would have thought so yeah I, I'm supportive of that I think it's an opportunity and it also clears away some odd dross mm. I was a bit surprised it fell on the peel last time I thought the peel would allow it to go through but I think it's a bigger house, wasn't it? I think sometimes bigger, these little it? schemes um, go through on document submission, and you know Ashford, are, I've got a, you know ten-page officers report going through the NPPF and everything else in fine detail, and and they'll say, yeah, fine, okay, we'll support the bar. Mm. Mm. Obviously, sometimes they don't witness you and Lamb. Mm. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So that's the planning all dealt with. On we go. Um, now we get on to the documents that we need to look at because it's the annual meeting. Good night, Mary. Good night, Good night. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> she wanted to tell us where we were wrong. Anyway, um, on we go. Um, so these documents we have got to review um, because we are required to annually. Um, I think really the only issue we can do tonight is to say, does anyone have any anxieties that they've already come up with on them? I can't say that I have read them all through it again, <laughs> uh, but I haven't had any problems with any of them. I think that Yvonne and I at some point need to go through the standing orders and the financial regulations again. We do. The standing orders have been changed since the ones that we agreed so we well, originally. So, so we do need to look at So we're standards. deferring. I mean, we're, we're saying tonight that we don't have any knowledge of problems, no. but we should look at them again. Yeah. Um, and the financial regs as well. Um, we then get on to reviewing the effectiveness of the system of financial internal control and internal audit, unless anyone has got any problems. Um, we regard, uh, we have to sign that on the audit submission as well. Um, do, we, do we need to reflect momentarily on events <laughs> in another local parish? Well, we will talk about that when we are at the end of the meeting and it's closed. Um, yeah, okay. But at this point, um, we, unless anyone has any views to the contrary, feel that we've got an internal auditor who is perfectly sound um, and is the treasurer of the church, and the previous count, um, chairman of the council here. Um, and we have Yvonne having been clerk for over a day and responsible financial officer and previously, uh, before she retired uh, from that role, a professional bookkeeper. Is bookkeeper the right term? Yes. Um, 
what else do we do exactly? We we see the accounts every month um, with all the payments. We agree the things that we should. Um, we have found in the past one or two things in the financial regs that we weren't doing, um, which we have um, tidied up. Um, was Alan, sorry, was Alan's comment regarding the insurance? No, no, no. We'll, we'll come to that. So the implications yeah. of that. We'll come to that in time. We're, we're not falling into that. <laughs> okay. In fact, okay. the insurance is part of it. But yeah. okay. we're, 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 not, we're not in that particular hardware, okay. but I will address that later. Okay. Um, for information yeah. offline. Yeah. Um, so we're happy with that, I think. Yes? Mm. To review the inventory of land assets and office equipment, um, which is here, it's the asset mm. registry. Mm. Mm. Right. You've all got it. Yeah. We've got a company. And uh, I was, I was <coughs> really surprised, and this is obviously the worst time, that, that, that once recorded the value of the asset doesn't change from year to year. Because if you look through this, you think, golly, we're. What fantastic asset here, but you, you would, you would decline, um, you know, you, you'd um, depreciate. We, do, we don't do any depreciation, uh, and indeed we don't do accruals and deferrals either. All that, uh, all that we do in our accounts here is receipts and payments on the name, um, and uh, assets do not get depreciated until they're thrown away. Uh, in no. fact, I already had a discussion with you on tonight because we are very long on mowers, where we've bought new mowers to replace ones that we're no longer doing the job, but it turns out Alf still got them all, so that's why they're still in the list. And I will have a word with them about that. And just a point, just a clarification, when we got down our community assets, the green, that's the village green. No, no, that's no. The, green. The, village, the village green is the so. registered yes. village green. So and just that's remember what the green is, as opposed green to... Is the green. Garden. It was in fact pointed out to me tonight mm. by, uh, by Mrs. Smith, uh, one of our residents, that um, she is always <laughs> nagging about this. She thinks calling the green the green is um, not a good idea. Mm. And as we've now got about seven monuments in it, <laughs> it should mm. actually be called the Memorial Garden. Now, the Memorial Garden is in Yvonne's the main picture, the little bit of planting just around the wall. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh. For most people's yeah. minds, that is the wall memorial. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I said that I will get grief from my learned friend here, but that I would suggest tonight that it would not be a bad idea, and most people in the village would recognise it better. Mm. Some people would get confused because they're the only ones who know what it is, that we call the wall memorial the wall memorial, which includes a little bit of green, that we call the green, the memorial garden, mm -hmm. which has now got about seven memorials in it. It's got the, um, uh, the new walnut tree. It's got the airship memorial. It's got the violet, um, what's its memorial. Yeah. It's got the uh, memorial seat. Mm -hmm. yes. It's got the memorial to the centenary of the uh, Great War that yeah. George just did rather nicely. Mm. Yes. Um, might even be another one. Oh, and the church of Oak. That's oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, that's think I think Memorial Green is the bus shelter, which is also a memorial to mm -hmm. right. Miss, mm -hmm. Miss What's Her Name? Oh, Apple, 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 Apple Trees. Uh, Miss Apple Tree. Miss Apple Tree. Apple is it? It's a memorial to Apple Tree. Apple Tree. Tree. Yeah, her, Apple. It was, her, her name was, I think it probably only got one, one P, one but P. it's yeah, Apple, 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 Apple Tree. Uh, Miss April Tree lived lived at Spurman Hill House. We need to have a sign mm -hmm. actually calling the April Tree mm -hmm. bus shelter. Yeah, it does have black inside it. Does it? Yes. Oh, I don't know that. Oh, sure. yeah, it yeah, have you know. tried the buses? <laughs> <laughs> What's okay. a bus? <laughs> right, okay, so I'll leave it with you there, but I think that yes. Memorial Garden mm. will actually be in the morning in We won't God. take that decision tonight, it's not no, on the agenda. No, no. Okay. But um, it would, I mean, most people think that. Um, that, that's the village green, in fact. Yeah. Yes. Or, or Coronation Hill is the village green. Yeah. Um, of course, that's another memorial, it's the sort of Coronation. Yeah. Um, that's a celebration rather than a memorial, isn't it? Well, yeah, <laughs> all right. Depending on your point of view. Okay. <laughs> it's dual purpose. So, uh, Paul was asking what the green was. I know, no. <laughs> <laughs> Now you know. Yes. Do pass on to Mrs. Smith, that you suitably educated me, along with the rest Absolutely. of the parish council. Necessary. And we agree with everything she says. Mm. Yeah, right, good. We'll come back to that. 
Um, <laughs> so uh, if we're happy with this then, uh, the, the clerk keeps it all perfectly Good. carefully, yeah. and uh, so we accept that. Mm -hmm. Um, confirmation of the arrangements for insurance covering respectable insured risks. We're actually rolling over for another year. We're on his mm. We're on a three-year deal, I think, and we're not finished yet. Mm. To review interactions in resident, with residents and the public. That was something I wrote a few years ago when mm. uh, we were prompted to by a member of the public who was not here tonight. Mm. Um, I think there's, it's, it's stood the test of time. In fact, it hasn't really been challenged. Well, it was challenged at the time, I think, and then settled down. Mm -hmm. We do have no, the policy is in all the notice no forms, so, or mm. just yeah. this one, but right. it is. Okay, okay. Um, to mm. review the FOI procedures, um, which basically mean ask Yvonne, um, yeah. uh, she does it. Mm -hmm. um, to review the council's policy for dealing with the press and media, that's another one that I wrote a while ago. Um, and it hasn't been used much, but it's used, been used a little bit, like when I got asked about this one. So we've done those policies subject to anything popping up yeah. another time. We get one happy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, done. Right, um, we now get to the forward task That's list. It. Now I sent it out this afternoon rather belatedly. Um, what I would suggest unless you want to get involved in it now is if you want to raise any points, please do. Otherwise we can discuss it in more detail next month when we haven't got this long list to go through. Yep. Good. Yeah. 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 We've dealt with some of them already, haven't we? Indeed we have. Well, some of them are just carried over. Yeah. Mm. Some of them are, um, you know, like, consider a revamped children's play area. I just put that in as a as a pitch. Um, uh, and even in matters of information, perhaps, we'll talk about something that's quite interesting that's related to this, but okay. not directly, uh, when we get to it. Long-term program for village assets and amenities is partly there to prove that I do listen to uh, Alan, who said last month that we ought to be doing it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, not unreasonable, actually. Um, chest tombs in the churchyard, that's getting my own back on the same page. So before you, before you read it all, Jerry, we'll move it to the next meeting. Well said, sir. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> We shall be. Yes. And uh, George makes a good point. <laughs> good night. Sorry. Good night. You're welcome. Thank you for the company. <laughs> You're welcome. So forward task this next time. Okay. Uh, okay. What's Alan going to do? Turn his lights on. <laughs> just, oh, just, just for the record, Alan's left the room. <laughs> I thought he'd gone off with old man's disease, but something else. <laughs> we are still being recorded. Yes. Yeah. Indeed. So when Alan comes back, we'll talk about number 24. Racing he might not come back for an hour. Yes, can we not... Um... <clears throat> We've still got a quorum. I think we. I see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. forward with that. Okay. I briefly read your your uh, your um, email. Your email there, and um, uh, I, I, I I was a bit confused at the end of it. I must mm. say, part of me says says if someone's if if, if this been if something's been sliced through in the mm. issue, and so why would they wait nine days to report it? Oh no, they reported it at the beginning. Okay. They had to wait for open reach um, to come. And then say, so, okay. Uh, first, first of all, really all okay. First of all, your point is that should open reach be there in the first place? Uh, do they have a way leave? That's, that's, the, that's the key for a lot of it. That's the key to lock it. Um, and 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 also, um, if 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 the uh, parish council's employee is deemed to be liable, have we got sufficient insurance to cover that? That's the other thing. You've got because liability. You've got yeah, masses. which is which is fine because that you know that's that might be yeah. hopefully we don't, we don't get other things but that's the key thing there. But um, if if um, Open Reach should have a, a way leave, we want to find out when the cable went in, then we can backdate how much they owe us. The interesting thing was they were actually doing that while I was doing the bench, but it didn't occur to me that to say to them what are you doing why are you there. So taking, you wouldn't, taking, would you? What the told day, me, the taking what Sue told me, uh, it went wrong. The day she says Alf did the fence, and I mean she can see out of her window whether someone's in the field. So I'm assuming she knows where that was. Um, she would have when it went wrong. She runs a business from her home, so it was a concern. Yeah. To her. yeah. 
um, she would have got on to BT saying, oh, my line's broken, and they'd have sent open reach within whatever their service time is. She tells me that the first technician who came said he couldn't go in the field because it was private. Now, that suggests to me that he was conscious that he didn't have a way leave. Yeah. Mm. But we don't really know the rules on these way leaves, to be honest. Um, Elon's got no record of one, but there may or may not be one for ever in a day. Um, when she first said, would well, we willing to uh, consider compensation, I told her straight away, well, I don't know anything about waiting, it's all rather odd. Um, I talked to Yvonne and Yvonne said, well, you know, we wouldn't necessarily be too difficult about it if it's a modest amount and we're not admitting liability, you know. Obviously, if, if they had a way leave, open, le open Reach might complain to us about their costs, yeah. um, which is an issue. Um, but what we don't know at the minute is whether the wire goes from the bus shelter straight across yeah, the green to the mm. house, mm. which would be straight. very odd. Yeah. Or if it's actually curling round the back of the bus shelter, heading off round the street and then up her lane to Pond House. But if that's the case it and he cut it. a wire, why didn't he cut 10 or 20 yeah, or 30? Why yes. expect more yes. people? That's what I thought, yeah. Now, <laughs> she said that he showed her, the second one who came, who's now fixed it, he showed her the hole where it was. It was just by the fence post, but it's running street-wise, not off here wise to have if the house is here yeah. you know mm -hmm. so um the the draft letter i mean it's all a bit obscure and uh, it's hard to explain without writing a book um, what i'm hoping will happen is that it will prompt open reach to talk to us and tell us where they think their wire goes and what it is be useful. and if so if they know if mm. they know and well they should know I have a concern if someone's. Uh, I, I, I have every sympathy with the lady whose yeah, business yeah, yeah. was interrupted. I mean, I think my one concern is 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 around um, if if we accept liability, yeah. which we haven't, which we haven't, uh, then someone potentially could come forward and say I lost a ten million pound deal as a result of it. Mm. I, I know I'm exaggerating no, no. the point. Yeah, yeah. We just have to be incredibly careful. Mm about who's liability and, uh, and hmm. what and where because... That would be consequential loss, of course, and I don't think BT or us were liable for them losing uh, the deal. You, who knows? Yeah. That, that's, the, that's the problem. I mean, it, 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 all sorts of things happen in, in that area. I think, first and foremost, we have to get uh, detail. We have to really know where this wire goes. It is. Well, because it could... By the way, the, it, they haven't proven it was, it was ALF. No. I think that the fact is, I've got the... I only know what she's pointed out to yes. me. <coughs> but I do have the... Alf said he wasn't aware he because I asked him, yeah. were you aware? And he said no, and surely a wire would it would have some sort of cover or something, something under, to, well, under some something. concrete. Yes. Well, it should have some kind of armour armor sheet on it. That's it. Yeah. Or under so concrete. He said and, and, all of that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then of course if, it, if, if, that's, if we've got to... That was a one-off post, wasn't it? With all the posts there. Well, if, he has to do, well, if he has to do other posts, you've got the same potential oh, yeah. problem. Um, what he has, and why are those wires under the posts anyhow? We only the posts in the first place. What, he's, what we've got here is the, the road is here, the bus shelter, if you like, is there, mm. the, the hedge goes along here, and there was a hole in it, so he put a piece of fence in yeah. like that, yes. okay? With about three posts or four like that. Yeah. Of course, here's the road. And I'm suggesting maybe the wire does that, or maybe it does that, because her house is here. Just at this post here, he has now dug out a turf there. The, she says the open reach man dug it out. You can see where he repaired it. And one end of the repair is under this hole. Now he had to loop around because the post had cut the wire. So either the wire went from here to here, and he cut it, I don't know why those didn't, and he's looped it round here, or it's gone to here. We don't know. We don't know. It's not, but it's, it's right not, next it's to the post. Right there. There. You wouldn't have thought so. Oh. I, it, it, I can understand him looping it round there. That's only not, my suggestion. Not necessarily yeah. a good idea, yeah. but then presumably it has to go up here, and then round, round the road, there's yeah. someone, and there'll be other people. people. You'd think yes. it would be other people. The one thing she told me, because I asked her, is if that was the post, she said the wire went that way. 
which, is, which suggests round the back of the bus shelter again. Perhaps but we should just dig a shallow trench right across there and see what we can see how many more. <laughs> what we do know, um, if Openreach do engage, and I hope they will, if I write to the chairman with your approval, then, which is what Peter mm -hmm. Leach suggested we do, he agreed that you know you can't really get any sense out of Openreach any other way. No. Um, but the, the chairman has a big correspondence office. Um, and they okay. will simply have to pass it on. Um, if they engage with us, they can find their wires mm -hmm. um, because mm -hmm. they have these little yeah. uh, magic yeah. yeah. things. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it should be on a map, but whether they're on a map or not, mm. they can find them. And I believe they can also identify a particular house wire and follow that mm. Mm. number. So, okay. is that okay yes, uh, yes. at this stage just to send the, this letter and so. memorandum? Mm -hmm. Might save anything happening in the future of a similar nature. That's yes, really. exactly. Indeed, I think they'll yeah. wonder what on earth's going mm -hmm. on. But at least we, the other thing is, I saw the woman today, um, Sue. So, um, uh, she was pretty irritated when she rang me originally. I mean, not rude, but you know, yeah. what are you going to do about it? By today, I said, it's not, we're going to discuss it tonight. I said, nothing's going to happen very soon. We're going to try and get uh, open reach to engage with us. Uh, and it was sort of, yeah, yeah, all oh, 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 right, all oh, right. And she told me for the third time, um, <coughs> you know, she doesn't blame Alf for it. She described him as the, we shouldn't blame the poor man for doing it, you know. Doing his job. Doing his job, yeah. Um, you know, if he'd seen the wire there, he probably would have been careful. But <laughs> who's to say, I mean, he was digging it, not um, looking for a wire. Well, just well, it wasn't a power cable. Well, I think they're probably more careful. Well, to be honest. well no, we've heard that. Yes. About that. <laughs> yes. Well, we'd have been cut off. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. What well, 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 I do with my agenda? Um, yeah. Here we go. Church wall. Primitive church wall quotes. Well, if you remember, quite some time ago now, we did have a quote which was very three thousand seven hundred and fifty. Plus that. So it's the court farm oh, side, that bit? It, it was for the, the corner, oh, right, okay. mostly, and then they were going to work on the other bit and using um, the stone from the edge. But I at last... That was what, 3750? Yes. Yeah. Plus that. Um, I got a hold of Ray Pilcher in the end and asked him to quote, so I met him down there and showed him the corner and the bit further round mm. where we wanted yeah made good and then Paul Stern said he'd fill in the rest. So Ray's come back with um, to remove ivy, take out loose stones and replace using lime water which was used before 300 pounds. <laughs> Find like stones that. in undergrowth to make an end stop to the wall and a buttress two metres from the end because the wall is yeah. mm. uh, 600 pounds. That's nine hundred pounds for both. So we so were right to wait. Raise um, always, always a good bet. Yeah. Yes. yes. The only mm. question is how long it takes to do it, but we've been waiting a year anyway. So you, you, at least you, 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 you'll do it pretty quickly. Good. Unless he's got a really, really big job on, which okay. you better. So can we approve the way? Yes. Yeah. Good. Yes. Thank yeah. you very much. Well done. Hey, it's okay. Excellent. Good work, Yvonne. Sorry, it took me so long. Um. Now, the next one is uh, get something off of our asset register. Approval to dispose of the old laptop <laughs> to the clerk for pound. Now, this is the old HP one, the, the big red one mm -hmm. she used to carry around. Um, seven years old, 291 when we got it. In other words, it was a pretty low grade one. This was about 600. Um, it's obviously up to us oh, to yes, dispose yes, of yes, it. Yes, yes. It's been John took everything off, so it's back to factory settings. So it's on Windows 8. Do okay. we have to charge a pound? Can I? I think well, we ought to. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I think just you know just cool. Just, yeah. just yeah. definitely. Can I just make a, a maybe it's an obvious point? This, but uh, John might have taken might have restored the factory settings. There will be information on there, which I'm sure is completely secure wherever you plan to store it. But if you then plan to get rid of it at some stage, um, hopefully it's not too obvious, please don't take it down to the dump. Or the it, that, it, it, 
that people are very good at taking old yeah. laptops and stripping stuff. No matter yeah. what, yeah, you're quite yeah. right. So, in fact, if at the end of the day you, you might even be better off not just you getting someone to hit it with a sledgehammer very mm. seriously. Yes, don't, don't, so. don't, do with it, don't do with it what the man in line of duty did. Yes, no. exactly. Take it to the shop. Yes, Well, he should have sold it to the Paris Club for a quid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it would be safe. Yeah. <laughs> Now, I, I, I have not with that I haven't had a laptop but I have with my old PCs taken out the hard disks mm, yes. and walloped them with a club hammer yep. and mm. actually I tell you what they don't have to take a lot of yes, punishment yes they do mm. yeah. satisfying <laughs> yeah. right right yes good stuff. that's agreed well done um, um, Team okay and co the insurance renewal is simply the Hiscox one and yep. it's already pre-agreed if you're right. Okay. I did pass it to the chairman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vice chairman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well the LCR annual subscription £17. The LCR oh. is the magazine we get from Nelk mm-hmm. every month. The glossy one. Quarter, I think it's compulsive reading. Oh, right, quarter. Joy. Uh, can <laughs> can <laughs> thank you association we subscribe to. Yeah. Can I just make a very small quick point on that? As members of the Kent County Playing Field Association, does that benefit the cricket club and the, sport, the sports club? Is that, I doubt it. No, 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 I'm just thinking, that. I'm thinking of the future and being mm. retaining that. You mentioned earlier on about building houses on it. Was that yesterday? The, you know, there's always a concern something might happen. Mm. That I wasn't wondered, seriously suggesting No, 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 but, no, it wasn't a serious one. We were just saying, oh, okay. just saying <laughs> I was just wondering whether being a member helped protect our future. I don't know, or slightly. It gives us the opportunity yeah. of ringing them up and they say, who are you? And we say, yeah. oh yes, we remember. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, but they do yeah. tend to protest when things like that happen. Yeah. Right? No, so that's, yeah. Then. Okay, no, good. Enough, right. They take no notice, then, yeah. No, they don't. <laughs> no, but they, they do at least. There's someone with a voice about it. Um, we've got the certificate of membership from ACRK. Good. Are you still a trustee then, aren't you? Yep. Yeah. Um, Working party reports for caretakers, that's an important one because we have a budget to agree. Mm-hmm. That comes under by good organisation. Oh, does it? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You're right. Actually, yeah, I've got the meeting of the yeah. report yeah. on yeah. the yeah. meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we had the meeting with George well, and uh, Yvonne and, and Michelle from Ashford, who is the liaison person for the parish councils and for the caretaker scheme, and myself. Uh, that was a few days ago. Uh, Alf came as well. Um, and uh, Michelle seemed to be quite happy. She didn't do the revised contract last year for three years, so she's going to do it next year for five years if she ever gets anything out of the lawyers. Yeah. I think she's been more than happy. She's been very she's pleased very with the scheme, the way it's mm. running, and mm. what else. Of course, no trouble, basically. Yeah. There's only ever been one complaint to Ashford in the time that we've had the scheme running and she wrote a very robust letter back to the resident. I couldn't have, I, I wouldn't say I couldn't have done better, I couldn't have done it as well. It was very and she also said we did very well to get in when we got in because oh, I yeah, you couldn't want to get in now and you can't. So. Indeed, no we are lucky. Yeah. It, and, and funnily enough, well, it's not really funnily enough, it's, it's a fact to be remarked on, John Rivers always knew that. He mm. said we need to get this while the doors open. Yeah. So it was all good. Tenton and are officially on the scheme, but not quite the same. And apparently, this I didn't know, I did know that Tenton took over the cutting of the grass in the cemetery. I was surprised when I talked to the clerk, because I, th- I thought they'd become the burial authority. Mm. No, 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 no. Only, only cutting the grass. Mm. They've actually thrown that back as well. Oh, um, no. Didn't like doing it. So... What they like. You know, we are. <laughs> what they like, yes. And, and as I pointed out to Michelle, you know, we are a burial authority. Um, well, we are, I mean, Yvonne is. And she's an authority on burials. <laughs> okay, so that's We should have a sign up for is that. There else to say? <laughs> you are now entering a burial authority area. <laughs> <laughs> Be very careful. <laughs> yes. And. Litter picking is actively <laughs> discouraged. Litter <laughs> pittering is actively <laughs> discouraged. Yeah. That's like the sign that says anyone who throws this will be shot. <laughs> and a big sign saying, to the stocks. <laughs> you know, we need to brand it. Everything. Right. Yeah. So finance next, which is now the um, caretaker budget. No, it's... No, it's not not just like first. <laughs> we 
which side of the paper is it? Oh dear. This, this one here. Yeah, the big one first. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're right. right. It's in, it's in the small print. Right. Okay, go on. Of course I'm. Right, monthly transaction statement. Yeah. Mm. Yes, we've got the precept in, as you'll see. Well, first half of the precept. Although we've got the remittance advice for it today. I did speak to Wittgenstein's school the other day, and I just spoke <coughs> to the fact that the phone was picked up by the lady who runs the library. And uh, hmm. uh, she did thank us for the very contribution. Brilliant. Did she run the library or she's the finance? Anyway, she did thank us. Well, yes. Some do, but some do. Yeah, no, some do with £100. They're coming out thick and fast tonight, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Is she as nice as the young lady receptionist from Ivy Court who answered the phone to you? Indeed. I'm known for, well, that's an old musical old joke, isn't it? It's like mother in, mother in law jokes, that the doctor's receptionist. But she was excellent. I'm so I'll tell you what, though, they were going to deliver the prescription and they never arrived. Never came. The road's closed. Oh, they ran up to say, can we deliver the prescription mm. before we move? Because we're trying to clear everything out. And I say, well, we can collect it. No, 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 we'll deliver it with it in which room tomorrow. They couldn't, they find, they, they couldn't find a it's drug mule. It's on its way. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. It's, it's still coming. It's, it's got as far as... It's got, it, it got, it's stuck, got stuck, small it got stuck, it got stuck by the road closer. Oh, yeah. 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 Maybe she said she heard that I'd given her such a good report, she didn't have to bother. <laughs> OK, and we've got the precept in. Yeah. yeah. And the other little bits. It's interesting that this first half council tax support and first half concurrent functions grant, they were both slated for being done in about five years ago mm. when they first started going to count. Mm. They reduced them a bit and then mm. they just hung in. Mm. So lucky us. Good news. Up here. Oh, in the right. man. Well, it's because I write too fast. Slow pen. <coughs> right, now the other side is just the ones that come out of that. Yeah, yeah take, take a one just a bit. And the mower's en route at the moment, isn't it? It's, yes, yes. New it was in the ocean. Well, not in the ocean. Crossing the, <laughs> the ocean. Crossing the ocean. Crossing the ocean. Way, yes. It's bombing across the sea, is it? Oh, yes. <laughs> Right, now we get to the budget, which um, George and I put out, I think, didn't we? Think. Um, no, I wasn't there, but I have seen it. Oh, he's gone, he's gone, he had to go over. Yes, yeah. it makes sense. Yeah. 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 You can see all of that. Budget actual and the new budget. That's the last budget mm. and the new budget. Is that f for a full year? <coughs> how, how how come the caretaker's salary was less than the budget? Is that because it, that? Well, it was, I think income? it was the way I broke it down last time. Oh, okay. Because I think the overtime. Because oh. he always works. Um, because the bin your refuse collection here yeah, is on a Monday yeah. and it's a bank holiday okay. he still does it he still mm. comes out oh, right. first thing mm. so he gets his couple of hours overtime mm. for that you know, but that's in the next line of course yeah so that but I don't think I took it into account so I'm taking oh, the see. actual life I um, take it out this time to show a bit more accurately Okay, uh, the van didn't get serviced in the year, it's just new, I think, now, so that's mm. why it's naught there. And so, yeah. but I haven't, you, you asked for me to add it in, but I will probably do the next one the year so, after. So, oh, right. is that the same with the insurance then? Insurance, no, van insurance, yeah. yes, van insurance. It's coming into the next year, yes, because I paid it on the it's due on the 11th of May. And I paid it on the first of May, which so it's out of this year. Oh, whereas okay. normally I would, yeah. I'd obviously paid it in the April before, yep. but I will pay the next one in the next May, so we will keep it, keep it like that. I want to find out where his source of cheap fuel is. 
Jensen's. Yeah. Gosh, they're so much less than this. It's brilliant. It's just unbelievable. And the game mowing that I have. Up you have to change the fan as well, and the new one might be more efficient than yeah. the old one. Yes, of course. Diesel. Yes, the gang of mowing was stroke Robert Pudan. We're not using landscape services anymore. Mm. So, but Robert did say that if he was doing it, he would probably do it more often than they did. So that's why I've increased the mm. budget for that. And the reason we didn't spend as much as we budgeted in the year that's closed is because they messed up a bit and yeah. they messed up mm. the bill and yeah, yeah, we, we right. just didn't get charged. Mm. Yeah, mm. I wasn't going to pay for it. All right. Mm. Okay. Um, so, is everyone happy with that? Yep. yep. Yeah. I mean, the, the fact is, it's it's pretty comfortable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, it's good. Mm. Right. Okay. You know, one thing just to point out, you know, the pension is a lot higher because yeah. it's mm. just gone mm. up mm. now, so we're having to mm. pay. He's having to pay more as well, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Right, now we're approving this at this moment, subject <coughs> to the discussion once we're in closed session about his pay rise, yeah. where we have a recommendation. So subject to that, can I okay that? Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't have to sign no, it. No, no, no. Okay, good. So now we're on to the planning working party decisions from ABC, the Hope Farm bungalow, Placement dwelling was granted. That's ages ago that we considered mm. that. Mm. I thought I'd even seen it built, but evidently it must have been somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, um, it was not that long ago. I could, I could do much better than yes. on time lengths than well, that. that. <laughs> 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 you also haven't been granted. Still haven't admitted it. Uh, tile house host, the replacement windows, it's good that they granted that, but they were hardly not going to. That should be an improvement. Yeah. Um, mm. the, uh, Interestingly, the Meadow Bank one, one, the conversion there. from agricultural to non agricultural Meadow Bank next door to Pastor. Meadow Gate. Meadow Gate. Mm. That's gone through this week. Yes, I've got, I'm just going to add it now that it's came through. through. And oh. also, Lordings Oast, the yes. drive mm. in has been mm. granted wow. as well. Reasonable. So two. Okay. Uh, high raisable? Uh, apart from the fact that the, the closure, um, and the, I don't know if this, this counts, but I have noticed that some of the grass verges are about this high, mm -hmm. going out towards yeah, so Cooper's Corner. Is that is that burner's responsibility with highways or? Highways. Yeah. Okay. Well, they sometimes engage people like Burner to do yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. It's mm -hmm. their responsibility. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, um, but but uh, I tell you what, around here. Compared to say driving from here to Cranbrook, the roads are in good nick. Yeah, mm. the road between on the Cranbrook road from ten to the nick. Oh, it's horrible! Falling. Yeah, through mm. the woods. It, it's, well, yeah. there was a death on that road just very recently, mm. wasn't there? Mm. Somebody was killed. From yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know who. I don't know why you cross the border from Kenton to Sussex. Oh, that's that's really bad as well, isn't it? Going yeah, into Rye. Yes, yeah. it's quite they noticeable. Do they have the same? I mean, do, do, does the pothole pot reporting system the bridge yeah. of, yeah. Uh, in Kent? Do they have the same in Sussex? Yes, no. yeah, okay. yeah, same day, same thing. As a Sussex resident, yeah. you you must go down up and down. That oh, yes, um, yeah, I'm always reporting. <clears throat> right, mm. they have the same system and the same outcome. <laughs> yeah, 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 to be fair, <laughs> we, we we seem to. I, I will tell you one thing though about. Planning, rather, because there, there was a planning application for a house opposite me, yeah. and I made a comment. And the planning officer came back to me to say that there were new plans in, but I'd like to look at them. Wow. And mm. I've got 10 days to make any further comment on it. Mm. Now, I thought that was very good. Pretty very good, good. Yeah. isn't it? <laughs> that, mm. no. Okay, um, <laughs> for the arts. Um, nothing from me. From <laughs> yes, I can. Um, with they're going to, I believe, normally we have two vegetation cuts, you know, the mm. certain parts, not all of them. Um, and I'm told it's going to be three this year. We're due the first one very shortly. Um, so I'm down to check them that they're okay. I've also offered to assist with the ploughing and cropping campaign that they're going to have as well. We're just going to keep an eye on whether parts are reinstated. Mm. Um, a new style has been erected between um, go across the orchard towards the gill yeah. okay. and instead of going along the gill you then go up towards mm. Blackbrook yeah. mm. they have put it, there always was a style mm. but they've put a new one in that it's, it hasn't been one for years it's been a gate, mm. always been open 
but they put a stile in, put a new fence in, put a stile in, and it's virtually impossible to get over. Oh, wow. <laughs> There's a step, and it's, it's up here. In fact, mm. I took a photo of one of the ladies <laughs> yeah. last week. You she had, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. <laughs> but it, it's only by the fence that you can actually see to, you know. That's it was a very step. tall man who put it in. Exactly, that's what we've said. And who didn't own a small dog. It's got to be, it's, it, Crazy. it's ridiculous. So, um, so I've reported that, and in fact, I've had a, I've had a, yeah. You're not fond of the style, of the new style. <laughs> so I the lady trying to get over it. <laughs> a little feet don't even touch it. No. <laughs> don't you just tuck your skirts in and leap over? <coughs> She's only four foot tall. Mm. I mean, she is. I think you're thinking of the suffragettes, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's ridiculous. Yes, it is ridiculous. So it? I have actually, I, I commented on a couple of others that the posts were wobbly, but I've actually had an email back to say that they will go out and inspect that. Because it's the farmers it put it in, it's mm. not. Um, no, right. it's well, you couldn't get a dog through there. No, well, no, you can't get a dog. I mean, you're supposed to be able to get a yes. dog through it. Yes, Okay. It's only the other way. You, you know. So, what, what is what? So it doesn't get any lower. Oh, yeah, yeah, really I'll tell you what, that's a very. Who's that sitting on there? <laughs> my walkers. Oh, she's jolly brave. She is. I do that, or she's under four foot tall. <laughs> That's that's not a star. That's a that's a, a, a three day inventing. Yeah. Thing. <laughs> that's ridiculous. That's what, they, that's what the walkers do. Versus <laughs> <laughs> travelling, they start taking Wednesday off. They, they take a long run up. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. based on the Mexican Wall. Yeah. I think, I think <laughs> even Jerry <laughs> might find that a bit of a challenge. Well, everyone needs to know that if they come out on the walk tomorrow, it's picnic day. <laughs> oh, okay. well, Nine years. Before or after the style. Nine years. Nine years. Well, Jeremy would be all right. He's got long legs, isn't he? He'd be able to get up over it. Good. Very good. Can I just ask if there's any news on the footpath through Summer House? No. No. Right. So many. Open spaces. Hang on. Open spaces. Open spaces. Very, very clean. Good. Good. Up to the litter pit. Good. Thank you. I'd had a few issues, not necessarily open spaces, but I had a few issues um, to do with housing on the, house, on the estates. Um, there were manhole covers that were loose and the mm. surrounds were breaking up. Alfred reported this. Oh, yeah. So I asked for a meeting with the... Um, site manager or well, the housing manager for which Jim in fact is for quite a large area I emailed Sunday night he, he came back Monday to say he was free all day wow. so I met him lunchtime busy to, man. 2 o'clock <laughs> I think he fancied a day out he turned, yeah. up, in, he turned up in his shorts <laughs> it's better should have taken him over the style <laughs> <laughs> no um, so I took him I worked out where we were going to go to. I took him to the play area first because at the gate, the vehicular gate, was. Because <laughs> he was wearing his shorts. <laughs> no, that's not nice. How long till then? Vandalised, so I showed him that. So he um, checked the whole fence and said it all could be done with replacing. Mm. But he'll get somebody out. He doubts whether there probably is enough money in the budget, but he thinks it could all be replaced. However, while I was there, there is a, a contractor on site repairing the slide. Oh, um, it had collapsed, and so they're putting loads of concrete. He said underneath, they're redoing the steps and they're putting a rail around the top. Mm. So while he was there and taking a photo of this, he then looked at the equipment and thought it looked, the climb, little climbing frame was, so I said, yeah. tired, and yes, yeah, so he took a photo of that. As he walked round, the safety, the safety surface around most of the equipment, you could almost pick up. Mm. So he said, that's not good, so he took photos of that. And the horse that goes mm. backwards and forwards, the board that goes around the side mm. is breaking away, oh. so he's held the safety to photo of that. Um, 
the swing, the little swing, um, toddler mm. swings, the birds sit at roost at the top yeah. and it's all over the thing. Mm. But he'd, um, I'd already asked Astrid whether there was mm. anything we could do a couple of years ago. Mm. And he said no. But he said, no, there are spikes, but they're rubber spikes. So, so the birds can't be oh. But the people, the kids that climb on it, <laughs> wouldn't hurt them. So okay. there's something that could not happen. Um, and then when he went to the other slide, not only does the surface lift, but there's a big gap between the grass and the surface, which mm. he said a child could get their foot in. So we took photos of that. Uh -huh. We then went round the back of Jubilee Field where the new houses are and where they've, um, they haven't actually reinstated the grass area is in real old mm. state. So he said they need to do something about that. There was a broken um, football goal sort of thing that was just lying on the ground. So he said he'd get that removed, took a photo of that. Went round to the other side where we walk, the footpath goes from um, the Uralam path, mm. path where it goes across mm. to Audi and that has still got lumps of concrete and bricks in it so we took a photo of that so I then took him round to um, show him the manhole covers and he pointed out to me that the residents are parking their cars, cars on the grass which they're not allowed mm. to do he had had a discussion with one of the residents mm. I had a similar discussion and he said there are actually six garages free, so people that can't get are finding it difficult to park there. There are garages free. Um, so he, because of this parking on the grass, he's now going to put knee high um, posts mm -hmm. around the area. So this is just at the top of the mm -hmm. Forge Means bit, so he's putting that there. So we did, I did have a discussion, why can't we have more parking? And I had a bit of an argument about where I thought, because he said, well, where would it go? So I told him where I thought it could. We did ask for this and before, yes. didn't we? But apparently he has asked. It's a different department, but they're not re they're not getting rid of any green spaces. That's that's what they say. He However, the mowing there. Oh. So if we've got these posts there, he's yes. going to have fun. Yeah, I'd already said okay. that. So, I, um, so having, I told him where I thought the parking could mm. go. He said, "Well, yes." He said, "I'd see if I can follow that up." So what he's agreed to do, he will write to all the residents to tell them that these posts are going to go in. And when he does so, when he meet, he will meet with the contractor up there and he'll get Alf to meet as well, so that Alf will know and can say where he can, wants to be able to, okay, to get in. Mm -hmm. yes. so, so the residents are still be able to park on the road? Yes, but they won't be able to drive up onto the grass. No, but as I understand it, there's one man I know moves his car every uh, from the road. He parks in the road, but he moves his car every Monday morning early because the dust can't can't get through because of the cars oh, apart. But he moves his car yeah. so that it can get right, right down the bottom. The top. Well, where the top. Are you yes, yes. Top. Where the, the bungalows where the bungalows are. Yeah. Okay. Right. I I would pass that on. Yeah, because it's because I did say well I'll go. I around mean, you will know the man who. Okay, well, maybe just go. Oh right, yeah, yeah. So he, he doesn't quite move his, moves car. his car. Oh, he so pumps in the road, yes. but he moves it so every Monday gonna, morning because of the dark car. Where does he move it to? That's that bit. Um, where does he move it to? No, I just, I just, that's whether he puts it, it on the grass, grass or whether yeah. he so puts it... Bollards, he can't do it, so no. he leaves yes. it there and therefore the dust can't... That's what I'm thinking. Through. If he yeah. can't move it somewhere... Yeah. That could be, that could well be. But that's that the area there. where I said you could possibly park. Because mm. that end house where the um, car went through the fence, they've got yes. a few. Yes. So he could carry on. It's yeah. not... Yes. So he, that's what he did think. He said, right. Mm. I, I will mention that to him. Yeah. Does it so cost... To have a garage? Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Not very much. But there's probably yeah. not many, is there? There's really? six up there. Yeah. Are they uh, the six free? Yes. It's only so much time for a week, is not it? It's like this. Eight pounds a week. Oh, wait. Eight, well, yeah. It's not even that. Mm -hmm. I think it's 20 if you're not a resident. I, I had one at one point. Oh, uh, right. I had 20. So we get, we've got Thursday. three, but we, we yeah. don't get mm. actually get charged. Um, okay. So it was... It was good, it was profitable, mm. you know, to get him mm. out there and he seemed quite reasonable. Mm -hmm. And he actually saw somebody that had parked on the grass, although they owned that house, they parked on their own grass, but as he pointed out, 
they've gone across council grass oh, to, to get, get to, to get their own grass. Oh. So he did knock on their door and point that out. I think your, your man would probably be exhausted after his day. <laughs> 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 You have Tuesday off. <laughs> from what you've <laughs> told me, um, I haven't met him. I get the feeling that that's what he does. You know, he's he's the sort of person who the reason he had nothing in his diary was because he just goes where he has to go, and he just does it. And, and if he has to shout at a tenant, he'll shout at a tenant. Mm. Good. And some of them need it. Mm. You see, as I've said, the, the parking on the grass, that bothers him. He can't cut the grass yes. if people are yes. Yes. People yeah. are parked on it. So he was awful. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. 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 Right. This is done. Thank you. Yes. I've forgotten yeah. you did say you wanted to do that. Thank you. Um, cemetery churchyard, Sue. No. I've got the well, wall down. Got the wall. Well, 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 yes, that would be <laughs> a really <laughs> big thing. Big tip. Yeah. Okay. Um, can um, I just ask, perhaps I shouldn't bring it up, did anything come back from the letter from the man who was complaining? No, the one that wanted to He didn't to reply come back. Me. No, because I said I was quite happy to meet him. And in we March. asked who who was. Money yes, and I didn't get anything further on that. Either. He was a okay. chap from Hampshire or something. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Indeed, but well. I never knew that. He was having a bad day, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. A virtual management committee. Um, Just as you'll be aware, we closed for a little while and had the roof over the storeroom repaired that was leaking badly and we've now had all the inside of the storeroom repaired and all the painting and decorating done at a cost of about £5,000 I think altogether. So it, it should make a big difference. It, it suddenly doesn't smell damp in here like it did before and we've got more storage now. So, um, Do we know what the damp here is? is we have, that's next on our list, having a survey done of all the walls really to see right. where, where we're happening. Okay. We don't even know if it's damp, we don't know what it is. No, because of course if it's wood, I suppose it could just be rotting inside. Could be anything. Yeah, okay. We don't open it. <laughs> uh, quick question. No, we haven't done that yet. <laughs> the, the Wi Fi that we've offered as a parish council yeah. to pay for, um, uh, I'm picking out several Wi Fi signals here, but unfortunately none from the village hall. No. Dare I ask? You didn't actually say that. What you actually said was yes, we will pay for the Wi Fi, but we won't pay for the room. Yeah, no, I. Um, <laughs> I said, said that. Yes, I did. Yeah. You are absolutely right. Well, I, did say effect, that. Yes. I did say that, and um, that was my understanding. But my understanding was from historic views in the council. Mm. Um, uh, I went away and researched it, and I also asked Yvonne. It looks as though that is not actually true. Okay. Um, there is in the local government act a provision that we don't have to pay for premises but it's premises that are paid for out of the rates. Really? And so we should go for those first. And we should go for those first. So strictly speaking, <laughs> we should actually be meeting in the school. Okay. And we don't wish to They've do that. They've got Wi-Fi. Yeah. <laughs> we don't wish to do that, really, I don't can think. I just I'm say, sure they don't wish to Can I say, it. please, 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 can we have a Wi-Fi connection? Yeah. No, that was the issue. When I went back and said that, you can imagine the reaction that I got. <laughs> from various people on that committee. So if you're now saying something different, then... Uh... That wasn't actually a threat, it was an alternative, but I take your point. Depends <laughs> <laughs> how you oh, said it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I said, I said that's a great if line, we have yeah. to pay for that Wi-Fi, then this is an alternative. But that was based on what I had picked up no. when I came here. In that, that case, what I will, thought as well. I will. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know, everyone thought that. Mm -hmm. Everyone. With, uh, but it's not... Preferably, if OpenReach had to put a new line in, perhaps they have a map that goes with it as well. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> OK, I will now follow that up then. Great, and, thank you. Yes. As I said, strictly speaking, as Yvonne just said, we probably ought to be meeting in the school, but I see a lot of issues coming out of that, and you know, don't make sense. Really. The school can't afford it. They have to. That's the point, because they're paid for out the rates. Mm -hmm. They still can't afford it. <clears throat> um, the only place we can't meet is in a play, unless there are no alternatives, is in the pub. Uh, again, that's the easy. Lucky thing. We haven't got one of those either. No. <coughs> okay. But, okay, uh, next planning meeting not on the schedule, next council meeting is the usual date. Items for information, what do people, what do people have for information? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Anyone else first? Nothing. Okay. Nope. Go for it. It's the plant then. <laughs> we have a report. Yeah, um, Jo, Ross, you may mm -hmm. remember mm -hmm. them, she was, she, when she goes on lots of these training things, Scam awareness, yeah. If you're done with those, well, she would like to do one in here 
after the community market on the 2nd of July, I think it is, she's, she's gone up with. Good idea. Um, I got to ask for a bit more, a few more details. She says that today my supervisor has a PowerPoint presentation which has a few videos within it. When we presented at a calm, we both talked in between the videos. He will bring the screen projector and laptop and set it up. It's around half an hour, give or take, and obviously we can answer questions, etc. Et Hopefully Lee will take part too. I'll see if Dave can show her the presentation at our next team meeting so she can familiar herself with its content. It should raise awareness of the types of scams currently out there and help people recognise scam calls, emails, mail and callers. Also to recognise if any friends or family may be suffering yeah. from being scammed and they will see some telltale signs to look out for. Some of the short videos are quite an eye-opener. Mm. Yeah, we've agreed for them to use the whole product. Okay. So, it's a good idea. But straight after the market, it's good as well. It's a good idea, but it depends how many people are going to be rushing off to the open gardens. That's oh, true. Ooh, yes. Tuesdays, 11 till 12. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Well, good point. Perhaps but they can open a bit later on that day, till one o'clock. See who it is. Yeah, I don't know who's, what one it is, um, whose it is. Anyway. If, if it's in here, I will tell you. Second of July. Have you got a report from Kate? No, but she is sending out those monthly. Yes. Yeah. Does she, is everybody. she aware of the the theft, the robbery, the theft, rather, in the village shop? It come through on next door, didn't oh, it? Oh yes, you reported it to police. Yes. Yeah, I, I just want to be. I just want to see if the loop is. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, that she actually knows about, about it because in the past, these That's things true. haven't always you been joined up. She didn't know anything about it. Did you say second of July? Yes. Second of July yes, there was a call from Jenny CCTV and John Newton. Oh. <laughs> mm, they don't oh. want to do that. That's <laughs> well, well, it's just a case of whether, Jeremy, they, then. <laughs> whether they can do it, you know, stay open a bit longer. It's only going to be half an hour, this thing, isn't it? Yeah. So it can start at mm. 11. Can it start half at past half 10? Well, it's, it's a bit difficult because there's still yeah. coffee oh, in the market still here, isn't it? Why don't you think the Newtons will... Well, I just, I just think that, that because there'll be lots of other people coming there for mm. that time, it's everyone's diary. People will mm. be going to Newtons for about 11. Yeah. No, I'm saying... Yeah. Is there, tea and their raffle tickets. No, I'm just saying can't... Okay. They'd be asked if they postpone it for half an hour. It's only half an hour, that's all we need. I know, well, but people I think get there at 11 anyway. The people get there. Oh, do they? Yeah. Okay. If they're not, there's only a, there's some that will go from me. The thing about the gardens, which has been really very successful last year, hopefully yeah. it happens again this year, is that it brings together people f across the village that uh, something we never see, or I never see, I mean, obviously they have groups within groups, but it goes across all sorts yeah, yeah, of yeah, groups. Yeah. It's this group, and it's the walking group, yeah. and it's the church group, it's and it's the people. horticulture group, and it's the... Uh, Mm -hmm. People who aren't even in the group track in together. Surprisingly <laughs> successful. That's yeah. what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. But there's, there's over 20 this year, isn't there? Yeah. 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 Dates. Yeah. That's That's a very good yeah. thing to be doing. She's done some good answers to yeah. Well, we People just have to make their decision. Supporter, they, Alan. Which they want to go to. We know you're an old supporter of There's a long standing. So are you saying you want me to say to John something? You're not an old supporter. Right. I've three phone calls today. Yeah, so I'm not feeling great, so I hope you can off. move on. Oh, yeah. I know. Three today. I didn't, I Liz, Liz is not today. feeling very well. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't need to say that, should I? <laughs> so I was, I was, I was, he's not feeling very well, so can we get a move on? You did to say some people will be late to the garden. Are we yeah. about to close? Yeah, I did try. Yeah. Thank you. Owing to, We're not quite, right. right. owing first. to, yeah, owing to, I'm just writing down what you wanted me to do. Owing to a scam awareness. I'm not going, I'm just going to mobilise because I'm going to freeze, to, freeze to the chair. That's all right. Okay, so anything else for information? Yeah. We're doing okay, yeah. though. It's only yeah. not 10 o'clock yet. Um, now, can we resolve then by the nature of sensitive to the next item to exclude the public? Can I have a uh, Paul and George? Everyone happy with that? Yes. yes. Fine, so that's what we will do. We will have a closed session once this finishes.